pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. physician. Trust in God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all areas of your life, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. For he sent his word to the children of Israel and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Have mercy on me, O God, for I am weak Oh God, heal me, for my bones are troubled. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, and who heals your diseases? For I will restore health to you, and heal you of your wounds, said the Lord God. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. You shall cry. And God shall say, here I am. So how, you may wonder, do I believe God for my healing? Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door of healing shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. Whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. All it takes is unwavering faith the size of a mustard seed. For whoever says to yonder mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and believes in his heart, not doubting that the words he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Remember the adage, be careful what you pray for. It's true, the prayer of faith will save the sick and God will raise you up. Believe it. Believe that you are healed. You are healed right now, this very moment, in Jesus' name. See yourself healed and don't doubt, no matter what unbelieving friends tell you. Claim your healing now by activating your faith. Symptoms may not go away immediately. The doctor may keep your medication for a little while longer. You may have even given up hope. But don't give up. The body follows the will of the mind and spirit. Believe that your healing is in progress. By faith we understand that the earth and its beings were created by the spoken word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. For we walk by faith, not by sight. God's word says that if any two people shall agree as touching anything you shall ask, it shall be done of your Father who is in heaven. Right now, claim your healing right now in Jesus' name. 
claim the victory. God is healing everything right now. Praise your name, Lord. The healing power is coming into every cell of your body right now. Just praise his name. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the healing. Praise your name. Glory. Glory, Lord. I accept my healing right now in Jesus' name. I feel the healing power moving up through my feet, through my ankles, up through my legs, all the way up to the very top of my head. God's healing power is radiating throughout my body right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Praise your name. Praise your name, Lord. Glory. Glory, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I claim my victory right now over any ailment within my body right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the healing. Yes, Lord, I just praise your name. I give you all the praise, all the glory, Lord. Glory to your name. Praise your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. All these things I ask right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for joining us this evening on Late Night with Lisa and Friends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that beautiful prayer by Brother Fitz Houston. It's my favorite. It's just so common and beautiful. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank that brother for his kindness and allowing us to use his material. Shout out to Brother Fitz. We miss you out here on the broadcast tonight, and I'm going to have you back on real soon. We were just talking about you in uh, a blessed way and saying uh, how wonderful it's going to be to have you back on here very soon. Everyone out there in the chat, I want to say hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I have uh, Celine out there, and MG, and David Chumney, and Bible Literalist, and Jesse Green, and Brother Luke says, Brother Luke, you're always saying something. Uh, <laughs> and you didn't, did, I want to invite Brother Luke, too, to make sure he puts that playlist in the chat for his jokes. We didn't forget, Brother Luke, and we're not letting you off the hook. Also, Sister Renee Roland is on the panel tonight. Uh, she's going to be chiming in on the different things we're going to be talking about. We're going to get to her in, a, in just a minute. Sister Angel has some wonderful things that she wants to talk about this evening. I think it's going to be very fun for, for you guys tonight. I had told Ben before we started the broadcast that I wanted to keep it a little shorter tonight. And Ben, he didn't say it tonight. But he's probably thinking, no, Lisa, you know you're not. You're just saying that. But we'll see. We're going to see what happens. We've got a lot of topics to discuss. Sister Renee has to jump off in about an hour and a half or so right in there. So we're going to have to let her go. She's to get up early for church in the morning. But uh, we're still going to have fun before she jumps off. Uh, let's see. Did I say hi? Okay, Switch321, didn't forget you. See you there. Thank you so much for joining us again this evening. So if I missed anybody, apologies. Uh, love you. Thank you for joining us. I was trying to give Sister Angel a little more time because Sister Angel. Oh, I'm here. I know you are, but girl, you 
you know, they used to have a song back in the day when I used to listen to worldly, worldly music. Uh, it was called Superwoman. I'm not your superwoman. And uh, I, I, every time when, when I hear you talking about your children and what you be doing, I was like, the girl is superwoman. Okay, she's That's superwoman. You don't know how dysfunctional <laughs> and inefficient I am. But yes, I do run around uh, like a chick with my head cut off trying to be a grown up. Uh, that's my, mainly because I'm so bad at it that I'm that I, I'm so busy all the time. Uh, I think that, I don't know, I just perceive, you know, when the Lord sees us doing stuff, we get an A for effort. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you're just doing the best trying. you can. Okay. And you prayed like, Lord, help me. Cause I don't even know what I'm doing, you know, but you step out there in faith and you get it done. Praise he God. Knows. I tell him it's his fault. He decided I needed four kids. Okay. I told him it was going to leave it up to him. It wasn't his birth control. And he kept deciding to, oh yeah, no, you just had one. You still got your, your she's on about six months old. Time for another one. Knowing that I'm terrible at adulting and that I'm barely <laughs> keeping up. And I'm like, you must know something. I don't know, Lord. I, you know, <laughs> that's his fault. I, I, you know, he's going to have to make up where I lack because uh, uh, this is all his idea. Never mind. That's, that's right. The Bible does say children are a heritage from the Lord. And yep. I do believe he already knew exactly. Yeah, of course he's God. But what I'm saying is, okay, Sister Angel's going to get with this gentleman here. That's going to be her husband. She's going to have, what what you what you say it was ten kids, this Angel? No, four children. Four. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but actually, it's really strange because yeah, he um, you know, my husband thought he was infertile his whole life, and he and his ex wife tried to have children, uh, and mm -hmm. he couldn't. And and when we dated, when I was like twenty, he also he already thought he couldn't have kids, and uh, that's because God knew if he, if Joel had had children with somebody else, he would never have left, no matter what. We wouldn't have been together. So. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's how, I mean, I, I see God's providence all over it. Uh, I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to take birth control, but I feel weird about it because, but I know really God doesn't care about birth control. If you're going to have another kid, it's not like, oh, never mind, cancel that. Like he'll, you can, you'll get pregnant on birth control. Really? That's, that's, that's the, uh, reality of it. I think God opens the womb. Um, and I know people that, you know, we're, you know, we're doing everything to try not to get pregnant and they still did. Cause I think it's, it's God's, uh, God's will. Uh, I don't know how it all works exactly, but that's my feeling about it. Well, before we get too much further down the road, I want to introduce our other guests. That way they can chime in. Where everybody knows Ben is back there, he's going to be quiet anyway. So I don't even know if Ben deserves an introduction anymore because he's so quiet. <laughs> so we call him, maybe give him a nickname like the Invisible Man. I don't know. But technically, you're not seeing any of us. So that really wouldn't be fair. But Ben... You're still there with us, right? I'm here. I'm here taking all the abuse. <laughs> he, he has been. He's been really gracious about it, too. He's a good sport. Say hello to everyone, Ben. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, <laughs> I, I I sit back and listen to you guys. I learn a lot, you know. I, I relate to women more than I do better than I do man men. Um, I tend to get along with them better, and we tend to understand each other better. Um because most men, like we talked about before, I'm way I'm way critical of other men just because uh, uh, I'm just critical of them. Uh, where I'm not, I'm less critical of women, probably because I I don't know why. But uh, we can talk. We're, that's what Joel's we're talk the about, same so. way. Yeah. So we. You know what's fun about guys like you, though? I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, but fine. what's I'm fun done. about guys like you, and then I'm gonna shut up, is you guys are so comfortable to be around. We forget you're in the room. That's all I want to say. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I, I'm the I'm the opposite of Ben. Uh, but Lisa and Renee and uh, people on the panel are, are an exception. But typically, I, I get I'm much. It's much easier to to relate to and be friends with with men. Uh, and it looks inappropriate for a married woman. But really, right. when you're married and you have four kids, you don't have time for friends. Like really, it's like not not. But you know, the people that I that you know that I consider friends still from my old life, I say like most of them would be guys because it's just. Um, a lot of women will play weird games that I don't understand or keep up with. So for me, it was like trying to have friendships with women. It was like being a guy that was insecure, that didn't know how to talk to women, mm -hmm. but just trying to make them happy. That was me. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what might make them mad or just because, you know, because women don't usually, they're not very straightforward a lot of times with what they mm -hmm. think or how they feel. And, and that's too complicated for me. So, um, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got not you. That way. Very, you know, Certain women are not. No, I'm very matter of fact and blunt. I have yeah. to be careful with that. 
Exactly. And stuff. I'll, I'll just say it, drop and like, oops, was that too harsh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, a girl. I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I hurt women's feelings too much. I'm too blunt sometimes, and people think I'm being mean, and I'm not. I, I don't know how to be, you know, sometimes. Fake. You know, the fake. filter. Yeah. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, for, for those of you who don't know, the, the other person that just chimed in right now is Sister Renee Rowland. I'm sure most of the people in Hangout already know Sister Renee, but other people here in the broadcast. Sister Renee is my special guest this evening. She's going to help us talk about some of the other topics tonight. Go ahead, Sister Renee. You were saying that you tend to be too blunt to and get in trouble for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I find that uh, uh, with, with sometimes ladies, younger ladies mostly can get yeah. very sensitive and take things personally. And uh, like if I speak in a general term, they're like, but you don't, you know, like I hurt their feelings too much. And uh, cause Angel was saying she didn't know how to talk to uh, uh, women as well. Yeah. And I find that I'm just a little too harsh sounding for some of them. Uh -huh. I don't mean to be, I'm just rough around the edges. I'm not, you know. Uh, well, that's one thing I'd prefer sensitivity, but then there's also that weird thing where there's like, there's like a competition you're not aware of all the time. Or right. like a weird dynamic you're not aware of. And, 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 and they assume <laughs> the you're aware of it. Yes, you're, you're, they assume you're like, you're, you're doing the same thing. And, and the nicer you are, the more they think, no, she's not really that. This is all a game. And they're just like wicked and not like, especially at work. If you're working with, that's the weirdest thing. And that's when, you know, it's just like, I wish I was a guy so bad. Cause like, I don't care about any of these games, man. I'll, I'll just play like the goofball. So nobody women takes me seriously. Women in the flesh. <laughs> Petty and uh, Caddy. Uh, competitive and gossipy and yeah, that's that's women in the world. I can't even I can't uh, yeah. even be a friend to one of them. I have had where I went to get jobs, they different got jobs, and, and I would pray that I would have a male interviewer because women yep. were so catty. They yep. it would just. <laughs> I'm here to get a job. I'm just, I'm not trying to be right. a com competition with anything going on here and all this weirdness they might have going yep. already. Yep. And you wouldn't even get the job and you'd be overqualified for the job in many cases, right. whatever. Yep. But the men, the men would be completely fair unless there was something weird. And not, it, yeah. And it's not just had the creepy alert. They're just yeah. absolutely nicer. That's just like a the regular guy lie. doing his job. Yeah. They've always been fair. That's why I was like, yeah. what are they talking about with all this sexism and I've stuff? I've never had that happen. At, well, I've, like one it, boss was really weird like that. But uh, most, I had yeah, a woman, you already knew the a creep girl factor. over the, the dishwashers <laughs> who did not speak English and were like 40 year old Mexican dishwashers. This girl who was like 18 at a, at a, when my first jobs as a waitress, she was training me. She tried to sabotage me so that I'd get fired because she didn't want the Mexican dishwashers to hit on her, to hit on me. Instead of her, like, I'm not even kidding you. She told me to throw away all my credit card receipts or something. And so, and I didn't know what I was doing. So I was doing like, I could have been fired because it was like hundreds of dollars worth of stuff that, that I was, she was sabotaging you. Yeah. Was yeah. Over the, over these dishwashers, like literally like just because she was worried that I get more attention. She so wanted stupid. to be the company, <laughs> whatever that yeah. is. And she uh -huh. thought you was going to beat her yeah. to her. I know I had, so she's not lying. I've seen the same thing. I, so there's stupid. weirdness. I would much rather be around men. The only thing I would have to do a lot of times is when guys would break into locker room talk, then I would just excuse myself, you know? Oh, excuse me. Okay. It's time for me to go. The end. Ain't no problem. Cause men do that stuff. They'll forget a lady's in the room. Well, I know what I am. So I'll excuse myself. But yeah, that would know, bother me now. It didn't used to. I didn't really use it. Yeah, clearly, yeah. Now it would bother me, and I'm going like, it's just gross. But right. In the past, but, yeah, other than that. other than stuff like that, that's that's why we're going to talk about men tonight. You know, in some ways, you guys are going to get some big thumbs up, and then others, we're going to talk mm -hmm. about some things that you might get your lip poked out. But it's going to be true anyway. But <laughs> not the way that you're thinking. Probably not, not the, the way you're thinking. Angle you're expecting. It's yeah, a, exactly. You're actually going to be surprised. Yeah. And I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Sister Angel. She has a praise report that we want to get yes, to. Yes. And I'll be really quickly about, quickly yeah. about it. Um, but I do think I owe God this uh, this much uh, to encourage people about prayer again. Um, recently, uh, so my husband he's been working at the same job for. I don't know, over 10 years now, but he was working like his best friend was also his boss. And uh, they're, he, they run the maintenance department at this big apartment complex. Right. And um, 
So his, his uh, boss, his name's Daniel, uh, he ended up, they got a new property manager and the property manager is always a woman for some reason. And uh, the, the property managers uh, have been horrible for the maintenance department. Like it's just that always there's this horrible relationship. And Daniel was the boss. So he was like directly, he was like the firewall between the, the, the maintenance guys and these awful office women that usually make everything impossible for the maintenance guys and do weird games. Well, um, Daniel was having like heart attacks and stuff in this position. It was such a difficult job. And so even though Joel was the next guy in line, uh, we were kind of, and it's really good to be a maintenance guy right now. It's like big time job security, especially even with like automation and everything. So I like that that's his job. But uh, the problem was the only opportunity for promotion was a job that at least has Dan with, with Daniel. Daniel was actually living on the, the complex. He has this nice house, like 45 minutes away, but he was living in one of the apartments just to him and his wife. And uh, uh, it was like a, a really big headache for him, especially because of the property manager that we had. Well, she quit and they got a new property manager. Right. And um, Daniel quit when that happened because he, for some reason, got off to this horrible start with the new property manager. And I was worried that she was how could she be worse than the last one? Right. And um, and so Joel. I mean, they, they, you know, he, he decided that he would try it at least. He thought maybe it might kill him and he wouldn't be able to do it with four children having Daniel's job because it was so, even though it pays a lot better, it was such a nightmare for Daniel. And um, uh, anyway, uh, he, he knew what he was doing and stuff, but Joel's not very good or he, he hadn't always been good when it comes to like uh, have he's not very, he's like kind of like slightly autistic seeming in, in terms of social sociability. So if you would think that he, that he would, that Daniel would have a hard time with a, a difficult female property manager, Joel would be even, you know, Joel doesn't have, he doesn't tolerate anything. He's like not big on, you know, BS, like uh, niceties and whatever. He's very straightforward, very honest, but he, I didn't know if he could navigate all the weird intrigue of the property manager uh, having to deal with that because they, there's all kinds of weird games these people play. Anybody that knows about this, you know, property managers in the apartment complexes, they, they'll probably know what I'm talking about. But, um, and you know, this one was so, this new one was so bad, Daniel quit. I mean, he just up and quit. He'd worked there for like 25, 30 years. And um, uh, anyway, uh, after the first few days, what was amazing was, and I was praying, I was praying this whole time. I had been praying even before Daniel quit that if Joel were to, you know, eventually take his place, that it, that it would somehow be okay, that he wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be this horrible because it was the only opportunity for any type of advancement there. So otherwise he would probably need to think about quitting and looking somewhere else. And, um, and I like this, this, that he has this job. It's just, you know, I, I feel safe. Uh, you know, I don't think something weird's going to happen, right? Like some of these factories closing down anyway. Um, amazingly, uh, after just like the like the, the second day after Joel got promoted, uh, he and the property manager finally like had a talk, a head to head talk. Like she's about 50. Um, and she, he found out the reason they were Daniel and her weren't getting along was because she thought that Daniel was involved with this scheme. The old property manager had uh, it, the, the, that, which is a part of why the, the old property manager quit. She thought Daniel knew about it. It's, I won't go into exactly what it was, but basically Daniel had no idea about the scheme, but it was a miscommunication and that's why they weren't getting along. It turns out this woman is awesome. She and Joel get along so well. She's like, she, she's, she knows about a lot of the conspiracy stuff to, you know, that, that Joel and I, even like the stuff we dealt with, like with my best friend and the satanic ritual abuse and all that stuff. She's totally like, I guess you call her based. She knows all about that stuff. She, she, she went through it too. Like her, her, her mother and her sister were involved in witchcraft when she was a child. And she, and she knows about a whole lot of weird stuff that goes on in the town she lives in about half an hour away. And this woman is just on the level a hundred percent. And she and Joel have managed to make the job totally like it's a streamlined it. Everything. Daniel was kind of the problem. He was what was making the job so stressful, his lack of communication, but Joel. So instead of this killing him <laughs> or being awful and miserable and like the worst thing he'd not be suited for, he is, like so happy he, he also they have a they, they got you know hired a couple new people this one guy's Cuban he's like you know 60 years old Cuban guy that's just like Joel's favorite person now and it's like uh, I can almost see like this light in his eyes when he talks about work he's so happy and so like I guess kind of proud of himself because he's he's not screwing this up it's actually he's made everything 
way better uh, because there were just a lot of things that weren't being done properly. And um, that's just God because I, I, I not only did the job not get a million times worse to where he quit because that's what he thought he was going to end up having to do was just quit find another job if he took Daniel's position. But it's even better than when Daniel was working there, which, you know, that was his best friend. So it was really nice to have him there. And, uh, and he's so happy. And I, and I just, I just have to, to, to praise God for this because, you know, people, uh, don't under, ever underestimate the power of prayer. Like I, I tried to shorten it. And so I might not have given you all the ins and outs that make you realize how miraculous it is, but just trust me, like the way things worked out and fell into place, it was only, only God could have done this. And he always does things in such a way where I know that it was him. And he's telling me, I heard you, you know, I got you, I got you covered. Don't worry. And, uh, uh, and I just love, I just love him for that. And um, I just want to share whenever something like that happens, I like to share it because I, I want to encourage people about the power of prayer uh, and, uh, and just, you know, talking to God, like, like one of your best friends, you know, he knows he's right there um, all the time and he, and he knows your heart too. So he'll, 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 he'll come through for you. Um, uh, you know, in the end for sure. But yeah, so that, that, that's about it. That's, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, sister angel. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. I want to make sure. Cause I, I was typing something in the chat. I'm sorry, sister angel. I missed half of what you said, but I had to um, okay. speak about something in the chat, but there's a, your praise report is much appreciated and I thank you for taking the time to share it with us this yes, evening. Thank yes. you so much. That was beautiful for what I did catch. I'll get more clarification a little, bit, a little later. Yeah, it was basically <laughs> basically that that Joel's pr Joel got promoted to his boss position and it, yes. it was like a million times better uh, than it, it's just a miracle. It's really just a miracle. <laughs> um, thank the Lord. I remember you saying that before we started. That he yes. got promoted. I was like, save it for the broadcast. I want you to tell everybody right. <laughs> we can use a praise report with all the craziness going on in this world. Yep. Praise God. Thank he you. Tell you people, he can keep you from anything because, you know, this whole time Joel hasn't had to, not only did he not have to leave work or whatever because of the mm -hmm. stupid shutdown, but he got hazard pay the whole time, like not for essential workers, but, it, you know, he wasn't doing anything different, but they were giving him like $50 an hour in hazard pay. Just <laughs> it's ridiculous, you know? Um, uh, but so that's that God, you know, he'll, he can keep you if he, if, if no matter what's going on in the world. Um, and I think a lot of the propaganda is designed to make you as a believer fear, whatever, else, whatever they're going to do, whether they're going to force vaccinate and have more faith in whatever they're planning than what God will allow to happen to you mm -hmm. and his people. Amen. Oh, Ben, someone's criticizing me for not letting you finish your sentence. So I want to make sure I let Ben finish his sentence. I don't remember even what I was saying. I uh, I was talking. Uh, well, we're gonna, I think we're going to revisit this topic anyways about um, uh, men and women and uh, men in general. Right. I think that's a, a major theme or something we're going to talk about again later. Um, and if that's the case, uh, uh, I'll, I'll revisit it then. I don't remember what I was saying exactly. So. No biggie. Yeah, I I think that we were we were just talking like in general and I, I cut you off because I wanted to tease you a little bit. So I just wanted to make sure that if you did have something you wanted to finish, you 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 had your opportunity to finish your thoughts. Um <laughs> uh, Sister Renee, did I lose you guys? Because it's like it's dead okay, over here. I, I no, lose. sorry, I'm here. This no, it's okay. I get like dead for... silence. Normally, I can hear an open mic sound, and I didn't get that at all. No, I so... have my mic off. Okay. You wouldn't hear my uh, dog squeaking in the background. <laughs> uh, Sister Renee, we were going to talk about, and I'm going to I'm going to let Sister Angel go ahead because she she's probably going to know more about this than the rest of us. Did you have a chance to look into Monarch programming? Yeah, I actually studied the M. MK Ultra CIA program years ago. I looked into it because uh, I didn't realize that's what Monarch was. I knew it as MK Ultra. So when I looked up Monarch, I was like, oh, yeah, I know all about this. And the reason I yeah. did it was because there was some weird stuff going on with celebrities back when Ann Hayes had a breakdown when I was living out really? there. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of yeah, I remember that about Ann Hayes. And then it went back to 
uh, Margot Hemingway. Remember her stream uh -huh. before she committed suicide? Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's why I started looking into it because I had not tied together that uh, it could have been similar programming. And I was uh, telling Ben, I cannot say with certainty, you know how careful I am about saying something was a fact in Hollywood if I didn't personally see it. Um, but I, I can tell you there was some talk going around on the set about just people that were normally really strong, uh, like mm -hmm. Martin. Remember Martin, the comedian? Yeah. At break, right. They were going to kill him. And it's like, this guy's not scared of anything. Why, why is he down in the middle of downtown L.A. worried somebody's really going to kill him? Save like Dave Chappelle. Well, and, and see, that's the thing is, I, I, it was, I was living in it for 30 years. My best friend, I didn't know that it was happening to her till I was 30. You know, so so I, I respect what you're saying. You don't want to say for sure, but it's like it's real like they real they're real subtle about you know, this. Stuff. I, and so when I was researching the Anne Hage thing, this was years ago, um, then the Britney Spears stuff started and then there was rumor. So all I can say is purported rumor that the Disney and a couple other studios were bringing these kids up and training them. But what I, I, I don't know if people realize this, it doesn't take as much as you think to put someone in literal mental bondage. Like right. uh, you see this stuff with um, uh, uh, people that are kidnapped, you know, they have stock, uh, uh, Stockholm syndrome um, and they, uh, identify with their uh, kidnappers eventually mm -hmm. enough that they you know, won't even turn on them. It doesn't take as much as somebody would think. Um, yep. uh, like, especially if there's group mentality and there's constant um, uh, things associated with it. Like you can associate pleasurable things when they do what you want. And then you can associate almost down to torture, uh, mental and physical torture of some sort with things that displease them. So if a person is trained up with pleasure and pain long enough, uh, they just start responding to it Pavlovian like. So, you know, a lot of people are quick to judge these people they see in cults, you know, but when you're surrounded by people that are constantly feeding you this, it starts to come your reality. And so it's not as difficult as you would think to actually do this, especially if you get someone very young and you uh, train them up this way uh, through negative and positive reinforcements. Now, it's a lot darker than that, but I just wanted people to know it's not. Uh, the CIA did mind control stuff on soldiers and spies and assassins. All this is found in uh, records. You, you can find this. This was not made up. This was stuff they really did. But I, I started hearing about it being associated with Hollywood and young celebrities to uh, uh, when Anne Hayes had her breakdown uh, going into what happened to her, you know, in somebody's yard talking to a straight. She just was out of her mind. And Anne Hayes is a super smart lady. I remember at the time she was dating Steve Martin, a really, really smart man. And uh, she was always of sound mind before. So something happened to her. I don't know what I can't, I can't say what, but I, I can say, uh, you know, with between her and Martin and Britney Spears and Amanda Bynes and uh, all these people having breakdowns. Uh, it could be that the, the public or the media people are just telling you this stuff because if you tear somebody's reputation down enough, uh, that can destroy them too. So we might not even be told the truth about it. This could all might all be just made up or, or, uh, you know, whatever, what I'm saying is what you hear from the media, the media is controlled. Mm -hmm. the media tells you what, everybody wants you to know it is no longer yep, exactly. and, and including the alternative media they not, including youtube yeah, yeah they are bought in this yep. country 
and, and it's not just the news the truth you will lose your job when when uh -huh. hillary clinton was found uh her people some dictator in some third world country was paying cnn to not run footage of genocide they made a donation to clinton's thing and then they sent like a million dollars to i think it was cnn to keep it quiet well a journalist there didn't want to do that she wanted integrity in the journalism and they destroyed her life she can't get a job now because she didn't play the game she wanted truth to come out and so you won't hear about these genocides and uh what these dictators are doing because the news outlets won't tell you won't hear about christians being persecuted and slaughtered in uh foreign countries because this country will never report that they'll report on the few uh, Islamic people and say that Islamophobia is going around, but we have a reason to fear that uh, horrible yeah. religion. But they, they, the point is, whatever they're telling you, the media is is bought, and so we can't really believe everything we hear about celebrities. But I do not doubt it's a possibility because I know MK Ultra was a real thing. They were training people as assassins to go against their own moral code, to be willing to shoot. You know, they train them up and have them. OK, well, would you kill a kid if you were told, like, make them go against everything that their own humanity would tell them not to do. And they would make them cross that line. And you see the same thing in satanic ritual abuse. They they make the person cross more and more lines, uh, sexual boundaries, uh, boundaries of um, things that they hold sacred or religious. Um, and that's why you'll hear about so much uh, about child killings and stuff, because they want to tear down someone's um, moral compass and their humanity till they're just an empty shell. And mm -hmm. I believe shells are to fill them with spirits. And so oh, yes. don't doubt that it happens. I just don't want to be like, okay, yeah, these celebrities were in Monarch program right. and Disney's right. the head of it. I, I can't say that. I do mm -hmm. have a lot of child star friends. I have some of them that left the industry. I still talk to them. Uh, and then mm -hmm. I have a whole trail behind me of dead ones. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't know for sure. I do know some things happened to my friend Corey and uh, he For kept him. Tight, yeah, he kept him tight to his chest, but I I can't you know speak on his behalf all that he went through. But I know you know he went through some stuff. But I, I just want to say I know it does happen, but I cannot verify for sure that it's happening to to these every holidays. celebrity, like they yeah. say, like some of these channels. And and I and then yeah, I agree, Renee. I know for sure it happens to some of them. I, I even know some of them I believe are involved. Uh, I don't, but, um, but when people cast with a, like, I, I don't believe that there's nobody in Hollywood that's like a, a legit person that like, ha like, that is, you know, trying, you know, not involved, you know, in, in the conspiracy. I don't believe that. I believe there are real people in Hollywood that are decent and, you know, doing yeah. whatever they think is right. But um, then there's, you know, but there's definitely also people like my best friend that, you know, were born into families like this, um, especially those people that are, you know, actually there's a movie, I don't know if you guys, I think it's called Spanglish, Spanglish with Adam Sandler, my fr my best friend's cousin was in that movie. She was like the kind of chubby redheaded girl, uh, the daughter, I think in the, in the film, she's been in a couple things, but she's part of that family um, that, you know, is, is bloodline this variant. And um, it's a generational thing. I, I, I don't, the MK ultra, it seems like what that, what, what that was about, was trying to um, take what was an occult tradition among these families for, you know, thousands of years and mechanize it to where they could take a, a recruit, a soldier, somebody that wasn't born into this. Because um, I believe generational curses play yep. a big role in this. And um, people that, so without all that, without the genetic memory, without the priming of, uh, of like, uh, you know, a history, a family history of this, which really does make a difference, which is why they came after my kids, because they, they know that generational, uh, like, they know that that genetic memories there, because my family, like, distantly 
is involved in this stuff, but you know, not, not recently, not, you know, my grandfather wasn't, I, you know, they were believers, but it's, you know, we're from that lot bloodline, the 13th bloodline. And, um, you know, look at they the value that, huh? If, what if, you you the, if you look at the movies, they kind of tell you about it. Like if you go to Manchurian candidate and you watch the movie split and you yep. watch the movies, like they're telling you because every time the, or winter soldier, in the Avengers thing, every time they have a few words spoken in a, a string, a string of words in a certain order spoken mm -hmm. in a certain way, it snaps something in their mind. That's just three movies off the top of my head that use this programming overtly. Yeah. When Hollywood Trigger words that over and over and over again, there's some truth to it somewhere. Uh I think that there's there was one like one phrase that I know of for sure that was used on my friend was um isn't it like the trash bin right when you when you w like when you delete something on your computer the trash bin her mom when she would want her to to forget something that was being said or talked about or or whatever she would say oh file that in the trash bin and mm -hmm. it was just real casual like it could have been done in front of me I would never figured out what she was uh, you know they have this code language. Uh, and the way they operate where it can be going on right under your nose and you won't realize it. You know, I mean, I lived with her family at one point and I didn't realize these things. Um, um, but it's not because they're geniuses. I truly believe it's because demons uh, control them in some way and that the demons are very clever. I, I don't believe when I what I've known about programming. No human could have ever figured this nope, out. They could nope. never have. I agree yeah. with that. It's too much. It's it, it would take a lifetime for just one person to understand that much about the human brain, the human psyche and how to split. They fracture people's psyche. This is what they how they explain it into a thousand shards. And then they try to program every single shard to serve one function or another. Mm. I believe that it has something to do with filling people up with demons like right as much as possible. And then having those demons pull levers in the person's psyche. I wonder I, if, I like, if the, the like, thousand shards ha, is there is the thousand points of light that uh, Bush talked about. I often wondered. I that. mean, I didn't. I that wasn't a a, a phrase. That, I don't know if if that was a phrase that that I've heard quoted. That's just how I explain it. I don't know. There, there could be more than that, more shards than that. But um, but that's like when one of the a uh, great place to go uh to to figure out to find find out the basics of this stuff. It's called SpallySpeaks.net. S V A L I speaks.net. She was like a whistleblower and a saved believer who like came out and told, this is how I figured out about my best friend. Everything she said, I realized that was my best friend's family. My friend was, was dealing with demonic possession at the time. And mm -hmm. so when I found out, I was like, Oh, so all this time I've known. And then, and then I found out, I remembered that, that she had told me when we were kids, she told me that she was a mind control slave There's and they had made me forget it paranormal uh, uh activity goes along with it too i've heard of yes. some of them developing um certain psychic powers uh, uh -huh. some of them hearing voices some of, a lot of people can't distinguish that from dissociative identity disorder which goes hand in hand i think i think it is spiritual oh, yes. but they um uh sometimes they will have uh like poltergeist activity in their home as well uh, did. i saw my friend my friend could move things with her mind Yep, there you and, go. Uh, yep, a, and I a, showed her that I would that you could because uh, she thought it was like something she could do that no. it was magically in her blood and I prayed against it while she was doing it and I sh under my breath to where she couldn't hear me at first so that it wouldn't influence her like she was trying to make this thing spin and she was doing it and I was praying under my breath and then it was started not working and yep. she didn't know I was praying and so I got louder and louder to show her that I was praying against it it's a demon. It's a yep. demon that, and these are parlor tricks that they get attached to. And they yep. feel pride about. She used to do this with people uh, like friends of ours. She would do, she had these powers. And I thought that people that would talk to me about this were insane or that she was playing a trick on them. Um, and, and she would like outright tell some of our friends that because her family were, you know, the wizards basically. And that that's why she could move things with her mind. And I, and then she would deny it to me. Oh no, we were just joking we were just because they didn't she didn't really want me to know about it then it was like a secret they definitely didn't want me to know about it back then um because I was very investigative and I wouldn't have let it go until I figured out exactly why she could move things with her mind and her grandmother and her mother were both in the MK Ultra project in the sense that they went to Fort Bragg uh to be studied for their powers like her her grandmother was like in the spoon bending 
project uh, like this like it was like a thing where they were trying to make them bend spoons with their mind her grandmother did that and then her mother I think it had to do with remote viewing uh, because they put her in a room that they set up I, I don't know how they did this but it was like a maybe they were it was out in in a field where they made just like a, an enclosed space I don't understand how they did it but the goal was she was going to this room and it was like a like clover patch and uh, they wanted her to spot all the four leaf clovers that were on the ground with a minute of looking at the, at this room. Like imagine trying to even find one four leaf clover in a minute, but they had some placed in there, but just her glancing at it for a, one minute and then being able to tell them exactly how many four leaf clovers were in there. So I don't know. I, to me, that has to have something to do with like remote viewing. I don't really understand what else it, that that what that test would be about. But that was one of the things that they told me. These were things that I knew growing up that I didn't know what they meant. I didn't know that that, that it about any of this stuff. So I didn't. I had one half. Uh, you know, I had like a puzzle piece, but I did, I had I was missing the other puzzle piece. So since I didn't know the CIA was involved in this stuff, and I was kind of an atheist, so I didn't believe in anything spiritual. Um, it wasn't until I realized, uh, I found out what the implications were, that it was just like, oh, this whole time, this whole time I've been growing up surrounded by this and I uh, didn't know about it. Um, and it's a, a lot of the military kids are put through this because uh, I'm telling you, a great deal of my classmates were, were, were put through this ritual abuse and programming stuff. Uh, we have a lot of military bases in the Florida Keys, which, by the way, Key West, Hemingway, you know, uh, it, uh, that, you know I'll never forget about... Uh, how much he has an influence in that area. Um, a lot of people would come down to uh, Key West that were, it was like, it's like a CIA bedroom community is the way I describe it. Like there's not like, there's not an actual, well, I mean, I guess because it all, all the bases, I'm sure I'm guessing they operate out of there, but there's a lot of CIA and NSA people that live there. And there's all kinds of weird stuff that goes down. It goes on down in the Florida Keys. And, um, and I didn't realize it, but uh, we have like four or five bases in the in Key West, it's so it's crazy how many bases we have down there. I don't know if it's four or five. We have a lot, and a lot of the kids I went to school with were military kids. And um, you know, one of my friends that I have known for years, when when I found out about Jalen, I I decided to ask him whether he went through this stuff because he, I knew there was some weird stuff about him. His he, you know some weird abuse stuff, and he had some weird split personality type stuff that I had noticed before, and he just was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe you asked me that. Yeah. He, you know, he told me just matter of factly that that's what happened to him. He'd never had anybody ask him. Nobody had ever asked him about it and he'd hey, never we, told anybody. We, we might think to ourselves, Hey, how could parents allow this to go on with their kids? But we got to remember they believe that Lucifer is the good guy. Yep. They think, yep. but people got to put their mindset yeah. there. They sister say, Ain, uh, excuse yeah. me, Sister Renee, let me, that's a very good point you're making, and I'd like you to elaborate on it. I don't want you to just say it real quick and run off. Would you, could you explain to us briefly if you were given a little short class on what the Luciferian doctrine is? Because I don't yeah. think a lot of people know. It was made popular by Helena Blavatsky, but mainly P. Hall, uh, the, the leader of the Freemasons, he, he wrote the literal books, Morals and Dogma. And he taught about their occultism and the Luciferian belief systems. And they believe that Lucifer is actually the good God. He's the bringer of light to mankind. And that the God of the Bible wanted to keep man in darkness and didn't want him to have power in all these worldly things and was trying to keep him from achieving things. And so they go on with, hey, uh, Lucifer is the advocate for humanity. He is actually the good one. And so these people, when they uh, put these spirits into their children or whatever, they don't think it's abuse. They, they think they are, uh, 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 they are equipping them with ascended masters. And um, that's what, you know, they call them the great white brotherhood. And so that's where Hitler got all this Aryan mess from out of Tibet. And it's so weird because it's like out of Tibet, the great white, the blonde haired, blue eyed. It's these fallen angel things that claim to be ascended masters. They're spiritual entities. Uh, there's a different story they tell depending on which group you talk to. But they think they're just equipping their children 
with these spiritual powers that are going to help them keep the money in the family, uh, get them the best jobs, open up opportunities for them. That's why like the Freemasons, they go, a lot of people join on the lower levels because it helps them get connections for jobs and stuff like that. Um, and they don't realize it till they get higher up. But, and many of them remain blind in the lower levels. But ultimately, Luciferianism really does believe that Lucifer is a beautiful angel of light. Um, I've heard of some people actually having paintings of him and many of the other angels in their home and not seeing them as ugly, demonic things. Uh, they think that they're in their former world. Yes. And one yes. day they're going to take over and that the God of the Bible is going to lose and they're going to rule with Lucifer here on earth and in, in this, in his kingdom. And so they think they're going to be able to convince God to leave the earth to Satan. You right. Know, that, that, that they will, that he'll take his people, but leave the, instead of like something like that. But you're, but you know what too, is that's uh, my, her family seemed to know they were demons. They told her that when she was little and they were, you know, they did some ritual that, uh, you know, that she was conscious of that she knew they were putting a demon in her. She, they said, think of yourself as a prison for demons. Aristotle. Wow. Speak to demons. Yeah. He called them demons, but that just meant spiritual knowledge. A demon right. just means knowledge. So they thought, I mean, I can't speak to that family, what they Have think a demon is, but like the ancient right. philosophers, they thought they just considered all spiritual knowledge to be a demon. Right, mm. right. No, but they didn't mean it in that That's way. That's actually what demon means. Yes, right? yes, yes. Right. But I mean, like, what? Well, like, they think it's not. I say it's like they, they knew they, they look at the Bible. They know it's true, but they chose to side with the villain. And they just don't agree with us that, that the darkness and evil is really that bad. Um, right. But some of the stuff they would say gave me the impression it's not they don't value good. So they don't it's not the same. Like, they don't look at things the same way where, where they think they're doing the right thing. They don't like think it matters to do the right. It's very hard to explain. Like they don't feel, they don't even need to believe they're doing the right thing. It's the only way I can put it. I. Well, can I ask you guys a question? Have either one of you ever read the book by Joanna Michelson, The Beautiful Side of Evil? Yes. yes. I haven't read it. I've heard her. Yeah, I heard her lecture too. I have the book. I haven't got around to reading it yet. Have you read it, Sister Renee? No, I got, well, online in a PDF, but I've heard her speak like, about mm -hmm. four hours of her mm -hmm. stuff how he how uh lucifer appears just like the bible said as an angel of light and beautiful right. and he's seductive and, yeah. and uh they yeah. there's a reason the bible talks about seducing spirits y'all that they they are slick they can slide right. in and seem like jesus himself yeah and they may not they, well, some of them do pretend to be him. Even Look, say, yeah. They mm -hmm. even claim. Remember I told you that one lady that saw him and she said she wanted to go to him too bad, but something in her gut said it's not him, it's not him. And she was lost. Mm -hmm. at she was lost. She almost wow. didn't know. But, uh, you know, she was saying they, and she's right, they don't have the same sense of, of good and evil. Or if you talk to an atheistic Satanist, they don't believe in a literal, which I don't, I think that's garbage, but they, they believe that you do whatever and it's all fair game to get what you want. And there's nothing wrong with that, but we would look at that and go, that's evil, you know, but they don't have that same sense of morality. It's anything goes as long as you want it. So I, I don't know. I can't speak to the people angels talking about, um, mm -hmm. But I can speak to what, see, there's the, these elitists, they different pride sex. themselves in saying they're Luciferians and not Satanists, right? They right. Separate themselves from the theistic Satanist and the atheistic Satanist, like LaVey claims to be, mm -hmm. there's no way he was atheistic. Right. And, um, I don't believe that for a minute. Yeah, that's <laughs> man, a God, that's a lie. And then, uh, but there's many that claim to be atheistic Satanists, but why are they summoning demons if they don't believe right. the literal devil? It doesn't make sense. But And doing uh, rituals and stuff, yeah. They, they pride themselves on separating themselves, like they because they're the super wealthy, the super powerful, 
and they don't want to be called just a Satanist. So they're called Luciferians. They'll, that's why you'll see like Blavatsky called her company uh, Lucius Trust. Right. Uh, it used to be called Lucifer Trust and they changed it and they still do business with the, what is it, United Nations? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yes. Everybody. Yep. They had, yep. they changed yep. their name at, at some point. There was also, they had the, um, there was a book company associated as well that they changed it and had that public, in the a publishing company or something mm-hmm. related to that stuff so yeah anytime like they they get exposed sometimes they'll change the name but they they manage to keep it in there some kind of way but manly i actually think it's a red herring i think lucius trust is a kind of like a, a thing they created in order to be the focal point so mm-hmm. that like i believe they do this a lot because they they they, they didn't I know how subtle they can be. I've like mm-hmm. with her family. It's crazy how like the guy from Nabisco, the owner of Nabisco, he's in this call. Like, like they they don't they can be what they call gray men. And and that was the first time I'd ever heard mm-hmm. that term was she told me they know how to blend in, they know how to not draw attention to themselves. Lucius mm-hmm. tr- Lucius trust to me, this was partly done on purpose to draw people's focus in and possibly to give people a little bit of like they know they've told us revelation of the method. So so when they explain why they're telling us what they, what they have this plan for the new world, you know, they say it's because revelation of the methods part of it. And I do believe that that's part of it, but I also believe that they misrep, they, they mislead and they put some disinformation in there so that we expect one thing when we're going to get another. I think that they, they don't telegraph every single one of their moves. I think a lot of what they will put out there like, Oh yeah, well we, we, we tell you exactly what we plan to do in like the, 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 I think it's like newsletters that will come out from Lucius Trust and their books and stuff. And I think probably 90% of it's accurate, but there's some twist in there that will, that will throw us off so that we won't see it coming. I really do believe that because I know that they don't have to be like, I know how, how secretive they can be. And so a lot of times when something gets a whole lot of press and a lot of attention on it, I'm very suspicious that it's legit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I will say too, Lerne that there are different, like, I believe that, that there's not, they're not all the elite people. They're not involved in the exact same practices. Like the, it's a general Luciferianism and this occult stuff, but there's like the, the what's it called? The order of the golden dawn. And there's, mm-hmm. uh, there's all kinds of different cults to where I think that there's slight differences yeah. in what they do. Uh, this, the, the, the yes. you know, Parsons, Jack Parsons and L Ron Hubbard. I think L Ron Hubbard was, Full of demons before he died. He was a yeah. paranoid nut. And mm-hmm. I, I think he was just so possessed, that guy. He was crazy possessed, like a total nut job. And yeah. uh, the, that's the order of the golden dawn. That came from Crowley, and he was wicked. Uh, the, but then you got the other ones that hide behind, like the Catholic Church. You got the Rosa Cruz. Oh, yes. Everyone that was involved, all the families involved with my best friend's family, they either said they were Catholic or mm. Jewish and uh, mostly Catholic, all mm. the people that I'm like, like they had this creepy church in big pine key. That was the Catholic church that they went to, but I mean, they weren't Catholic. Like, I mean, they weren't like practicing Catholic, but that's the, that's how they, they gathered. That was like their, like it was a masquerade because a lot of the kids that I know for sure were abused. They, their families went to this church and yeah. the, the pastor was a creep. Everybody, I mean, not the pastor, the, the father, whatever, whatever the priest, he was a known like molester of, of mm-hmm. girls. Yeah, you know, his name is Father Tony or something. Or no, now they have a gay one. Now there's a gay well, one. Well, there's there. a reason the uh, Hitler and the Nazis they destroyed every church except the Catholic churches during that right? time. And there's only Catholic and Jews on the on the Supreme Court. Interestingly enough, mm-hmm. they're not Protestants or atheists. I mean, I'm sure there's some atheists supposedly, but but it's funny how how they they, they, they created this straw man Christianity to where people who don't know better think that Christianity is represented somehow. But in this country, we used to know, we used to know there was a difference and that Catholics were not That's Christian. Right. We used to know that. That's but right. I think people are forgetting. I think people are forgetting too. And they don't even know what the word Protestant means That's anymore. Right. And, and the, Kennedy was elected. They were shocked. Yeah. When Kennedy was yeah. You know, my, my, yeah, uh, there were, there were people that said that it, my mother told me this, just, we were just talking about this last week. That uh, that people believed if Kennedy got elected, he was going to force the whole country to become Catholic. Oh, and that was a fear that that people would have. What they didn't want a Catholic president because of it. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she said something was uh, interesting, too. I didn't know. She said when she went to bed the night that Kennedy got elected, that he hadn't won the election. They were saying yep. it was a real close race and everything. And she Just said, like the race when, it was. <laughs> exactly. And when she woke up the next morning, it had switched that he had won. Yep. Yep. If you go back to Abraham Lincoln's time, there was discussions. They were concerned about the Pope getting his hands into America way back in the founding fathers' times. Mm-hmm. They were really yeah. concerned about the Catholic Church gaining political power here. Yeah, that was the same argument they made about Kennedy that the Pope would actually be running the country. Uh, but you know, I mean, logically, say, anyway, logically but, okay. if you're a good Catholic, then a good Catholic, because I call saved Catholics bad Catholics. Yeah, they actually, yeah, they're just bad Catholic. That's what you call them if, if they're saved. Uh, yeah, they're, you want to uh, read your Bible. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I. That's how I put it. Because I don't want to offend anybody and say I think Cap- no Catholic is saved. No, there are, but they're just bad Catholics. That's what we call them. <laughs> but uh, but good Catholics, they would subvert the U.S. for the Pope. I mean, that's that's they, they believe he, they would take his orders, of course. That's, the Pope is him. considered God, is God on, on this. What do you say? I say the same thing about Islam. I go, those ISIS yep. guys are good Muslims. They're doing what their Quran and their Hadith tell them to do. To yeah, the bad them. Muslims are the ones who don't want to hurt anybody and, and yeah. ignore it. Leave 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 it. That's right wife and any Muslim who won't uh, violently subjugate the unbeliever, uh, they're bad Muslims. You got to follow that. Well, that's how Islam was designed. It was designed so some people, you could choose to believe what you wanted, essentially. Because I know, like, my... Yeah, yeah, like, my my ex Lee man, he's brilliant and a, a wonderful person, but... He ha- there's all kinds of different like justifications they have for why no that's not true and it, no that's not and it's not like they're lying actually like it's it's almost doctrinally built into Islam that you can kind of just pick and choose it's almost like like there's this one tenet where it doesn't have to something about it like consistency is not required it's very strange but um but it's designed that way basically I think so that I could get as many people as possible to believe in it because you can choose to believe only the good part about it or you can um, you can do what it really says, but if you just make it, because because Muhammad was not supposed to be perfect, that's their justification. Mm-hmm. So basically, they can kind of take and take or leave a lot of what he says, and then they added a bunch of stuff by hadith, which is not mm-hmm. even from Muhammad, right? So it's mm-hmm. like a an oral, or not, or it's kind of like the way that uh, the Talmud is just a bunch of uh, a way to of, interpret the uh, mm-hmm. Quran, and some will just right. dis- disregard Let- certain hadiths. Right, because they have different factions that follow different things. Yep. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question real quick. Who is, I'm going to ask Ben, because Ben is trying to do it again. I ain't going to let him get away with it. Ben, did you yeah, fall asleep? Are you back there? <laughs> I'm here. Okay, let me ask you a question. Who is the Holy Father? The Holy Father in, in Catholicism? You tell me. Who, when you hear the word the Holy Father, who is that? That is our Father in Heaven for believers. The Father in Heaven. Actually, did you know I searched the Bible in the KJV? The term "Holy Father" is not in there. When I when I searched, you know what came up? The Pope. <laughs> when I did an internet search, no Bible reference for the Holy Father. It was the Pope. I what happened was I was watching a video, and this this guy was you know playing different stuff, and then he said some stuff that sounded very religious at the end and then he thanked the holy father and i said wait a minute hold up that's not god the holy father is the pope yes god is holy i would say you go to the book of the revelation of jesus christ it says holy 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 is the lord he's thrice holy when i saw holy father i said that's the pope so he was thanking the pope at the end of his video and most people wouldn't have caught it they'd have been like oh that's god hmm who thanked the Pope? I'm confused. Oh, it was a video I was watching. Oh, and at okay. the end of the video, when the guy was like running credits and saying different things, he said, and all thanks to the Holy Father. Yeah, that And is I said, point. that's not the Lord. No. That's the Pope. So, <laughs> <laughs> so understand that according to Roman Catholicism, whether most Catholics know it or not, the Pope is considered God on this earth. Yeah, the I Pope, did a video it, on that. He takes all three mm-hmm. names: the name of the Father, the Son, the and Vicar. 
Spirit. Yeah, he, he is the vicar of Christ. He's the replacement for the Holy Spirit, according to their uh, traditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a lot of Catholics don't even know. <laughs> well, like now you say, we have the to bad deal with Catholics, the trad they don't Catholics. Know. The trad, it's trad to call trad cast now or mm. something where, where they're now it's it's actually worse it's even worse because although yes they try to they, they don't uh they don't recognize the pope and they say that all of that since vatican II, um everything's heresy and all this stuff but but it's worse to me that's even worse than the people that are just playing catholic because they're trying they still don't uphold the true gospel and and so what they're actually more dangerous because they're trying to get they're trying to break away from all the very obviously like uh -huh. bogus, ungodly, evil things about Catholicism, yeah. and then that makes it more attractive to too many people. Ecumenical movement. They want to get right. It. We're to all bring us get, we believe the same thing. We worship the same God. Well, right. well, but the trad cast, it's not. They're not even. See, that's the problem. They're not even ecumenical. They are. They're kind of like a perfect trap for somebody who doesn't understand the true gospel but sees there's something wrong with the Catholic church. And so then they go to these trad casts as what they call it, traditional Catholics. And it's like, it's, it's, it's like a, a return to things that, well, cause you know, they hearken to, to the older popes, the popes that they think were valid. And they try to, to separate out all the false stuff from, uh, from the true Catholic church, but they're you even worse what? because they're sanctimonious and they don't realize there was never any true church. It was always Satan's church. Like their gospel's wrong. Tell me when they had the right gospel and then we'll agree. Oh, that was when they were really good. In the middle ages was so wicked. They got him off the throne, but he managed to like uh, manipulate his way or basically kill people back to his way back. The on Borgia the Pope? And no, not Borgia. And then they dug up the body of the Pope that got him kicked off the Pope throne and put the dead body of the Pope on trial. <laughs> put the dead wow. Body and then That's amazing. Desecrated that Pope's body in every way possible. Like burned yep. it, drowned it. All got, that's how evil these people were. Interestingly, my friend is descended from one of the Popes, the one I've been talking oh. about. I can't remember if it's yeah, Pope Innocent. He had four kids. He had two sons and one daughter, and supposedly one of the daughters, Chessery, and the daughter Chessery, were yeah. messing around with each other or something. There was all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't the Borgia guy that that she her family descended from. It, it was like Pope Innocent something or Pope. He's a really bad Pope, but uh, they that's that's part of their family lineage, and so that and you know they they go all the way back to to uh you know ancient occult bloodlines so he was already in part he was already part of one of those families when he became pope you see what i'm saying he was already one of these luciferians anybody uh, because god chose those popes because they would buy their way onto the throne they would blackmail yeah. and and bribe their way onto the popery i don't know how i i mean when you look at the history of the pope and how wicked they were. First, well, you know, we don't have a, a head of the church on earth anyway. Jesus is the head, a uh, high priest. But the way they got there, how could anybody think these men were infallible? Blows my Be mind. Because the ritual and the pomp and circumstance is really great stand in for true faith. And so people who want to have all of that and they want somehow to know God or they want they want this grandeur of the religiosity experience, it's very attractive to them to want to somehow believe there was something valid about Catholicism, at least at some point, because they don't know what faith really is and they don't have it. Dude, my friend was so crazy what? when he found out Thank the book was coming to town. He couldn't sleep for a week. These people faint. They clamor to kiss his ring like it's Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. never seen anything like it, Angel. I, I mean, these people worship him. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. This is the, that, and that word, remember, Sister uh, Renee, when you did that expose on the word venerate, how people tried to say they don't worship uh, him. Yeah, that they that worship. I'm sorry, I was reading the chat comment. The um, that venerate is not the same as worship. Yeah, but it is. It's just it a, is. it's the same word. They just have, you know, a hundred synonyms they use that are not the word worship. Yeah, <laughs> so, word but games. then they say it's not worship. Yeah, it's word games. That's all. 
Yeah, it's yeah. horror games. Because they fall out, they kiss the ring, they cry, they yeah. like you're saying, all that stuff. I mean, it's like it the, when you see people act a fool with these celebrities and pass out and all that stuff at concerts, that's what they do when they see the Pope. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, he was like a week, no sleep. He was so excited the Pope was coming to town. And and these people literally faint when they see him and they clamor to kiss his foot or the hem of his robe, like they used to grab Jesus's robe, you know. They they clamor to to touch him, like he's really holy. They have bought into this, this lie about this man. It's amazing to me. It, and it breaks my heart too. Mm -hmm. Because how many people think they're gonna be healed because they touch the Pope? Or the Pope. That amazes me too. Because even as a lost person, when I, like, as a be was an atheist for some reason, Catholicism was slightly attractive to me just for the ritual. Just, just yeah. because no, I didn't know anything about the beliefs. And I always was raised in a house that told me exactly what was wrong with Catholicism because my family preached the true gospel. However, I found myself attracted to their churches. Like when I would be in a big city, part of me would want to go in there. And I was just interested in like the exorcism ritual too, right? Like all these rituals were, because I didn't have faith and I didn't know what it was, but I, but I, I felt like it would be cool to go somewhere and light candles and feel like I did something by right. lighting these candles. And, uh, but even I knew the Pope thing, that was just too much. Like, that was a bridge too far. How could anybody be that stupid? Right. And that's what I thought. Like, how could anybody be dumb enough to think the man deserves that type of uh, honor and authority? Their yeah. whole lives, their families and their families. Mm -hmm them they believe this lie that it goes back to the apostolic seat of peter i mean mm -hmm. they don't even that's what's so creepy uh, Be they don't because really it goes back to judas i, I figured yeah. that out i figured out really what they claim is peter mm -hmm. uh, if I, and i don't remember how to explain I'm it but if you guys Girl, so, that's well, a yes, good point. I'm gonna have they're to carrying that. on the tradition of Judas. Yes. Wow. If you look at the verse that they're, and I, I, cause I don't know, I don't remember. This is a breakthrough mm -hmm. I had and I've totally forgotten. But basically if you go to the verse that they use to justify how they're the, the, the apostolic succession, that's the doctrine of oh, apostolic God, succession. My church. Yeah. The, 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 yes. yes, the, the verse that Jesus said to Peter, uh, mm -hmm. it's funny. Upon you get this rock. Yeah, but it really reveals that they um, it's not just the rock. There's something else. It's about Peter. The, the the logic they use to justify what they're doing. If you actually look at it from an accurately accurate perspective, um, you realize that what Satan really did was he he's he's actually carrying on the tradition of Judas. Wow. That, that, that the justification That's that they use really for all of point. it. Yes, it's actually Judas that they're carrying on it because that was who they're re re replacing, right? Supposedly, um, um, uh, so that's that that it's hard to explain. I wish that I had yeah, written I down. Mixed up. That's okay. You take time. You I develop you that, say? sister, and we'll come back and do a broadcast on it. Yes. Bones, what were you saying, me? That I've heard that they believe the bones that were Simon Peter's were actually Simon the Magus, the magician. Really? Oh, I just went, yeah, Magus. You said Magus, and I'm like, Magus, Magus. There's no evidence apart from Catholic propaganda that Peter was ever in Rome. It's 1,200 miles away, and Paul yes. was there starting the church. There's mm -hmm. no reason Peter would go there. He was in Jerusalem last we saw, and the, and the other place he was was in Syria. But most of the time, he wrote from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. so why would he go 1,200 miles away? When Paul was already there preaching to the Gentiles, I don't know. There's no biblical evidence for it, but mm -hmm. they've got Catholic tradition uh, claiming that he, he was there. Well, I, I've i had family members where we've had discussions. This is outside of my immediate family. Uh, my grandmother's brother, as a matter of fact, they were visiting my dad when he was sick in the hospital. And... Um, the nurse came in who I'm just m mentioning this. I don't care about anybody's ethnicity. He was has Hispanic or Latino, whichever. Um, and he was listening to what was being said, but he agreed. This is why I'm mentioning it because um, Roman, a lot of Roman uh, Hispanics or Latinos are Roman Catholic. So uh, my uncle, which was my grandmother's brother uh, was talking about, uh, you know, he picked a scripture where Jesus is speaking like a lot of people do, and they want to spin it into legalism that if you don't do these certain things then you can't be saved and they didn't understand 
the extrapolation between being a disciple versus being saved. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, and being taught of the Lord and following the Lord and doing other things. So anyway, we're having this discussion and I said, a person is only saved through the sole sufficiency of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary with his death, burial and resurrection and trusting in that. Well, the nurse walked in, in the middle of me explaining this and he did not agree. He's shaking his head. No. So I already knew what he was. <laughs> he didn't even have to identify himself because my uncle standing there is a Roman Catholic and they ain't both in agreement. <laughs> so I was like, you know, and I spent it's like 15 minutes trying to explain it to him and he completely rejected it, which is what most Roman Catholics do. He's serious into that tradition and mm -hmm. I pray for him. I think about him from time to time. He's not somebody I keep in contact with on a, on a, you know, even a yearly basis because uh, my grandmother was the one that kind of, brought everybody together as a family with the, the dinners and stuff, you know what I mean? And so when she got uh, too old to do that and, and, and wasn't in the state anymore to make those big dinners, that expansion part of the family kind of stopped just coming around and coming together. But we as a core under my, my dad and, and his uh, wife, my mother and children, we still get together, but they don't come around. So I, you know, I was surprised by that. Not really, because my grandmother was heavily into that until we got saved and every and started bringing her out of it and showing her the contradictions and stuff. But these people, some of them are so hard yep. into these traditions and yep. rituals and yep. they can't, if I say the word, because everybody thinks all I ever talk about, oh, Lisa thinks, no, even in the comment section, I just, <laughs> it wasn't over here on this broadcast. There's another one. Lisa thinks everything's witchcraft. Well, in this world, if it's all, yeah. if it's separated from Christ, it is. You know why? People just don't have the right <laughs> definition of witchcraft. That's the thing. They don't know what witchcraft why means. Why most? <laughs> right, exactly, why Angel. Catholic, why most Latinos in South America are Catholic is because the Spanish went over there and slaughtered everyone and forced them into Catholicism. Exactly. That is That's why what, yep. America is Catholic to this day. Which is part of why I believe that God has actually allowed for a lot of this immigration from South America and Mexico, although it might seem to hurt our country. I think it helps the cause of, of you know, of the gospel of Christ because a lot of these people now Oh, like a lot, I know a lot of Latinos, like my family, even in Texas, that are Mexican. And um, like half my family in Mexico is, I mean, in Texas, it's Mexican. And uh, they are, they're believing, they believe the the true gospel. They believe the Bible, um, even though they were, they would have been Catholic had, had they not immigrated here. Sorry, my little one's bothering me. That's crazy. Okay. But, um, but I think that that's a beautiful thing because you think about, you have a whole continent of people that think they know God. Yep. And but they come here and they and also our culture gets exported everywhere, uh, mm -hmm. which somehow has exposed people to where the Catholicism used to be the have the cor you know, the corner on the market. Like people people would confuse the two things. But American culture is more Protestant than anything. And that has normalized a lot of things uh, that are that are more Protestant principles than Catholic, you know, whereas before the Catholics exported their their you know heresy all over the place and establish these churches everywhere uh typically uh, in very occultic locations by the way that would have some weird significance uh that they would build their churches oh, in certain places right on ley line mm -hmm. yep on ley lines too seeing those south american i forgot where it was i think it was in brazil where these uh latina celebrities they were very famous there i can't remember who they were i did know the name of one of them uh, it may have been someone like Shakira, but they, they were pretty big. I can't remember exactly. But I saw them pouring their heart out in tears, praying to Our Lady of such and such statue, holding their hands out to her, crying and at veneration. Mm -hmm. not and they were like worshiping the statue and people were lifting their hands up to it. You could see offerings of flowers and other stuff laid around it. And it, it was so heartbreaking to see them thinking they're worshiping God and they are literally worshiping Satan. And we know that every idol is a devil. Every one of them. 
Mm -hmm. I don't care That's if right. call it Mary, but Mary would never claim to be the queen of heaven. Ne never. So it, all of these idols they are worshiping, whether it's a Hindu idol or a Catholic idol, they can play word games with me all day. But when you are crying and reaching out to them and singing a song to them, it is worship. And the Bible tells us that they don't know what they worship. They worship devils when they do that. That's right. There's a spirit behind those idols. It's not the, the thing itself. You, you're not supposed to do it. But there's, that thing is representing a spirit. Oh, it's, uh, it's I heard a lady. It was funny. I don't even know how her, she came up in my feed and I was just I clicked on it. I was like, what's she talking about? She said uh, she wanted to do this money ritual. Right. And she listed all these different things that she, <laughs> that she decided to do. Listen to this witch that told her how oh. to get money. And so she did. She said, I don't know. It's like 10 things that she had to do <laughs> to get. And you know why? The Lord did that as a protection for us. You can't trip and fall into most of those things. Right. You have to go through all this elaborate stuff. Yep. And so she went through all this elaborate stuff to get some money. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing. I said, it probably cost you more to collect the stuff that you needed for the ritual than it did. She only ended up getting $11. She was walking down the street, right? And she saw some money folded up and it ended up being $11. But she said it scared her and creeped her so bad that doing that even brought her some money. She didn't, she just like threw it away. She didn't want it because it scared her. I said, well, you ain't had no business messing with that stuff to begin with. Have y'all seen the ads on YouTube? Uh, this woman's telling her story about how she used to be abused and all this stuff. And then somebody gave her a magic bracelet. And it's all this, how her life turned around. And the minute she took it off, her life fell apart and all this tragedy hit her. They're really promoting, and it's some kind of new age Buddhist mess that are selling these bracelets. I believe they're all charged with demonic spirits. I they, think yeah, it's this Chinese scam. It's this Chinese scam, uh, these Buddha bracelets. I heard about this. Yeah, they're like, it's a scam at the very least. At the, at the worst, it's also like, you know, a trick, a way to, you know, curse people that they don't realize it. But it's also a scam. Of it's course. like this really cheap, crappy stuff. Yeah. And these are actors. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really funny. yeah, but it might be a scam. Some of them might be a scam with something attached that they didn't bargain for, That's too. Right. That's right. So, so you know, yeah, don't play, don't play with that stuff. It's real. <laughs> I'm some money because the ad is everywhere. You know? So, right. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, you know, you spend a, let's say you spend a couple hundred thousand dollars, you're going to make a couple million. That's a pretty good return yep. on your investment. That's right. And but what I, people don't realize is people, even they'll do spells and incantations to even make that stuff successful. People believe it because it is witchcraft. It is. It's magical thinking. I can put this right. on my wrist and my whole life will change. That's crazy thinking. But it's magical thinking. and it They created a soul tie with that commercial as well. Because now you're going to start wondering, people who aren't, and you're not operating in the resurrection power of Christ, that stuff will start turning over in your head, turning over in your head, turning your head. Well, I wonder if it works. I wonder if I try it. Maybe that's what they do. Yep, I won't be abused no more. I'll get my money back. I'll get the, I'll get a good job. I'll find a good man. Check I mean, out the comments under it. It's hilarious. If you look at some of the comments under these, it, it's people making fun of it, like just telling ridiculous success stories about how <laughs> How they grew a new leg or something, their leg got cut off. But this is so funny. It's like oh, troll it so bad. But well, I'm know, glad it's enough people that know that's a bunch of junk to a degree. But what people, what I try to get people to understand is that part of witchcraft is getting you to believe a lie, and that's what gives it power. That's what I'm saying. People are believing it, or they wouldn't be selling them exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Oh yeah, I, I can't believe that. It's amazing to me, but people. Uh, but getting back, you know, I think we've gotten down the road here a little bit yes. from our from our monarch. I wanted to ask you a question, Sister Angel, because you know much more about this than I ever will. Remember the movie, The Manchurian Candidate? Yes, I was talking yes. about this earlier. They would just say his name and his string of words, and he would right. Trigger. That's how I'm gonna ask Sister yeah. Angel. Do you? think that that was a very good example 
of what your understanding of monarch programming is? Um, it, I haven't seen it in a long time. I need to go watch it again now that I know about this stuff. But yes, um, the, uh, it's very, uh, because it's so weird, right? Like when you actually see the scenes where he, the programming's happening and stuff, and it just seems like this, like it, it just, there's something weird about it. Like, like even the, the so-called glitches that people have, like where Nancy Pelosi recently said, good morning. Sunday morning uh, and it's really creepy that that is what it's like like it's like the, it's like something it's like a different like these people are are are, are so they turn into this different person they just it's mm -hmm. like a, they trance out and the people that are doing the programming and the phrases um they're different too it's not like it, it's like there's something going on that's very foreign to me. That's what it's a spiritual thing. It's like very demonic because you see the way that these people operate. Like in that movie, that was one thing that stood out in my memory was how robotic and like yeah, strange everything was. Right. Yep. He tranced out just like in split. Uh, Almost like they're I in another think. place yeah. altogether. Huh? They are Kevin Wendell Crumb and it snaps him back to some other personality. Because they build structures in their mind. Now, here's one of the re here's you know the, the band that's called um um man, I've got oh my gosh, I have to I have to actually let me Google this real quick. Um um Bert, uh Bury the Castle. The song is called Bury the Castle by uh, let me Google because you guys have to hear like no, hear the song, go listen to it. And um, it's by uh, Paramore. Paramore is the band, right? And there's a song called Brick by Boring Brick. Brick by Boring Brick. That's a Masonic thing, by the way. And the song, um, let's see. She lives in a fairy tale somewhere too far for us to find. Uh, there's all, let's see. All right, so I'll go down to the part that's really weird. Um, it's all about the exposure, the lens I told her. The angles were all wrong now. She's ripping wings off butterflies. Keep your feet on the ground when your head's in the clouds. Well, go get your shovel and we'll dig a deep hole to bury the castle. Bury the castle. Go get your shovel and we'll dig a deep hole to bury the castle. And then let's see. I just want to read this to you because as soon as I heard the song, I knew that this was all about programming and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. So here's the last thing I'll, I'll read. So one day he found her crying, coiled up on the dirty ground. Her prince finally came to save her and the rest she can figure out, but it was a, a trick and the clock struck 12. We'll make sure to build your home brick by boring brick or the wolf's going to blow it down. Keep your feet on the ground when your head's in the clouds. Well, you built up a world of magic because your real life is tragic. Yeah, you built up a world of magic. Now, this is what they do. They In these programming sessions slash rituals, they have the person build a structure in their mind. Now, I don't believe this is possible mm -hmm. without the help of demons. I don't believe it. But mm -hmm. to the point where they have actually even published manuals. Uh, to, that that you know most people don't know about this, but there's like a manual that was that was uh, published at one point. It was very expensive to buy, but it was how to build the Starship Enterprise like from like from scratch. Like they, this is a fictional object, but they made a manual for how to build it. Right now, this wasn't because they thought average people were going to do this. It was so that people, programmers, could use that as a structural and uh, that's as a as a as a manual in to to program these people to where the structure that's in their brain. That, that houses all the mechanisms that make their programming work. It's very, it's, it sounds crazy. I'm telling you this is how, how you know demons did this. That nobody would even think this was possible, but they have to make the person believe it's happening. So they actually build from the ground up the Starship Enterprise. This is like, a, uh, would be a, a Star Trek based programming. There's also, you know, the, the Castle Enchanted Forest type programming, Labyrinth program. Like they, they basically will, will, will use stuff like the movie Labyrinth that was used in my friend's programming mm -hmm. and, uh, and the game Das Labyrinth from the eighties. That was, that was a, cre a game created for programming for programming children. It's a, it's a strange German game. And uh, they used that on her. Now she, the, I don't, her structure was a, was a labyrinth, at least one of them, but a lot of people like they will actually have a place in their brain that they think they go and, and, and it'll, this is how they make people think it's really happening. Right. So, so mm -hmm. if, if they think that, there, uh, there's a trap door in the center of their, their, their castle. Let's say it's a castle in their mind that, that where all this 
all these lies and personalities and demons and programming and memories live. Uh, they, they, you know, and there's this trap door in the middle. And if they fall into that, uh, they're gone forever. It's like a black hole, right? Well, that's how they would try to try to get rid of, of different alters. If they're trying to get rid of a certain personality, say program these people to have, um, mm-hmm. they'll have a structure in their brain where that person thinks that if they get commanded to, to in their own mind, walk down into that black hole in the center of their castle or whatever, that that personality is gone forever. Does that make sense? Like, it's like wow. hypnotism in a way where, where these people really believe these things are happening uh, it's partly hypnotic, partly demonic. And it's also based, you know, has to do with trauma. They have to traumatize the people to get them um, to dissociate because in the dissociative state, then they can use that to, uh, to do, to do all this programming, to make people forget, to make people um, have these coping mechanisms uh, that it's really just getting people, you're lying to somebody at so deeply walking them through these intricate lies. Like, there is no castle in your brain. There's no, ca- but they believe that there is. They think there is because it's, it's, it's a hypnotic suggestion and, uh, and it has to do with trauma. And if people really look into how they do this, it's unimaginably mm-hmm. intricate. It's not, I mean, I'm not, I can't, wow. how even one person could program another person, even in one lifetime, let alone just to, uh, while they're a child with all the crap they have to do. Mm-hmm. That's how you know it's demonic. Um, and that demons understand the human mind, not, not people don't understand the human mind that way. It's demons right. that do. You Sister know? Angel, let me stop you guys right there. Y'all getting deep right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> whoa, let's, let's put the brakes on for a second. Okay. It's amazing. Sister Angel, you blow my mind sometimes when you're talking. I'm, <laughs> so I'm hard listening to me. I want to hear more about it. But because of where we are with Sister Renee, yes. we need to jump yes, off in a little you. bit. We're going to stop yes. here. and We'll just do a part two. Next week, we'll pick up talking more about it. We'll invite Sister Renee back if she'd like to come back to continue the discussion. But I know you have to get up early tomorrow, Sister Renee. How much more time do we have with you? Yeah, it's about one o'clock here. Uh, okay. All right. I wanted to give Sister Renee an opportunity to, to jump off where she said she needed to jump off. She said she needed to get up early in the morning. Is this is this a good time for you, Sister Renee? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I, it's hard to. I got to get up early with Jim. That's and okay. I'm so sorry. No, I always try to be considerate of my guests. I'm always so thankful that you guys come on, and I want to be considerate of you and your time. So, Sister Renee, thank you for joining us this evening and discussing this with us. I'd like you to be able to say whatever you'd like to say to the. Uh, people before you say good night. Yeah, uh, I I did want to say Lisa has a good video she put up about two weeks ago. It's only about 10 minutes long. Um, what was it called? The one about the hammer? What was the name uh, of it? Oh, wait. I was it? Let me think. Uh, a, a, a funny parable? Let me see. Okay. Let me go look. Uh, it me was just, it. just a couple of videos back. Just a funny parable. Look that up. And I I wanted to tell you guys, I get this all the time. She tells this story, basically, you'll have to hear it. But, you know, she's warning these people they're going to get hurt if they go in this church because four people have come out and told the same story about how they got hurt. And then so the another person goes in, they're warned, they come out surprised that they're hurt. Well, it's the same thing here. You know, uh, there's a reason we mark and avoid certain major ministers like John MacArthur, Paul Washer, Ray Comfort, because we were saying earlier, anybody that is aware that's not blinded by self-righteous pride would be condemned by what they preach because their standards are impossible. Uh, Anybody that tells you they've stopped sinning. Uh, they're sinlessly perfect now. They don't sin anymore. Uh, usually when you corner them, they'll go, well, I don't sin on purpose. Uh, I, I make mistakes. Okay, they're just saying their sin is mistakes. But they will uh, be condemned by the preaching because it's not edifying. And they're mm-hmm. twisting up scriptures that are supposed to encourage the saints, but they don't they don't give you what the original context did. And that was confirm the promises of God, who you are in Christ, 
what he's done for you. And therefore you should go on to serve the Lord, make your calling and election sure, uh, all these things, right? Uh, they don't give you the good news before they give you the crushing news. Uh, they just tell you that you don't measure up. And because you don't measure up, you're probably not really saved. And so you'll go into a panic. So there's a reason we, we tell you uh, about these ministries because they will destroy your faith. Uh, a, a good pastor should encourage you to get, live godly. A good pastor should encourage you to stay away from sinful things. Uh, a good pastor would ask you to look at your life and say, hey, are you really living for the Lord? Uh, and, and, and encourage you to uh, strive on and to resist temptation. But they would never make you question whether you were really saved by what Christ did or not by looking to yourself. And so don't be surprised if you continue to listen to these people and you contact me in a panic and you can't breathe because that's right. what's been happening. You know, mm -hmm. you were talking about the Catholic church earlier. I've got someone that left the Catholic church and then they go and listen to these people that I said they shouldn't listen to. And they call me in a panic and crying until their own kid says, I wish you'd have never left the Catholic church. Cause at least at the Catholic church, they had the rituals and they could feel like they did their little thing for the day and they were good with God. But now they don't have that thing anymore. And so you don't want anything to strip you of your foundational joy and peace in the Lord. So mm -hmm. uh, look at that video she did. Uh, and it's a really yeah, it's called a parable for you concerning those who teach a false gospel. There you go. And, and next time you're tempted to go listen to somebody's hell visitation testimony out of curiosity, and then you wonder why you're sick to your stomach all day long, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a reason we should mark and avoid this mess. Um, That's right. That's it's, right. The Bible it, gave us the answer to deal with people. That's why it calls it another gospel. That's not another that it will trouble you. So the sign that it wasn't right for you to be listening to is that it troubled you. That's a good point right there. Exactly. It shouldn't trouble you. Um, but uh, so uh, the reason I said that is because one, I, I wanted you guys to see that because it was it was funny, but it was also very true. And two, because we talk about these heavy subjects like this, and I don't want anybody getting in fear thinking the devil's got all this power because he's on a short leash, okay? And no safe person has anything to worry about. We just talk and have discussions and like to inform, um, but don't ever let these conversations scare you. With that being said, uh, thank you, uh, Ben. Uh, for doing this and, and working with me to get me on tonight with all my tech issues. And it was good to see you, uh, Sister Angel. And thank you very much, Sister Lisa, uh, for having me. And chat room, oh. it's good to see you all. Okay, before we go, can we twist your arm to come back and continue the discussion oh, next yeah. week? <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Thank you, Sister Nay. Appreciate yes. it. God bless yeah, you. Really bless yeah, you sleep dropped a lot tonight, of great sister. information, Renee. It was great having yes. you. Yes. Yes. I really yeah. appreciate it, Renee. So I don't get, I don't get you, to do Renee. much uh, shows with you that often, so it's always wonderful when I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good right. night, sister. Good night, Renee. Love you. Okay. For the rest of us, I had decided, I think Angel sounded just enough energy. She can make it about one more hour. Because I want to get to talking about these men. We ain't going to let them get away with it. Ben wants to hide back there and coast. <laughs> I'm teasing him and go to sleep. But we're not going to let him. We're going to make him talk on the next hour. So we're going to take a break right about here and do our intermission. We're going to come back for one more hour. And we're going to talk about men. And I think our perspective is going to be, as Sister Angel alluded to earlier, a spin that you weren't expecting. So I hope you'll join us for the second half of the broadcast right here on Late Night with Lisa and Friends. We'll be back right after this break.
Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. Can you guys hear me? Because y'all cut out right away. Okay, good. We're back from the break. Apologies. It's just that I thought I got dropped out into the ozone, which happens sometimes on these streams. And I have to check and make sure that I'm still connected because I'll be talking and get to preaching. And I'm preaching to the air. That's okay. The angels got blessed <laughs> when I'm preaching to the air and I'm preaching to myself. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. And I wish believers would learn that. I, listen, always call for prayer. If you need help, call another believer, ask for prayer, ask for undergirding. Absolutely. But sometimes when you can't get a hold of someone to pray for you and you have a spirit of heaviness upon you, praise breaks that heaviness. I keep trying to tell believers, praise will break the heaviness. The spirit of praise, uh, the, the excuse me, the Praise will break the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of praise will lift off. Right, the that of garment heaviness. of yes. praise, exactly. And we put that on, and it does lift. You just keep doing it, and it lifts, and then you can pray. Because there's times I've told you I've felt where it feel like a boulder on me, like on my life, kind of thing, a heaviness. And I had, I be, I look at people like, do you think I got to do something different than you got to do? I got to do the same. Thing. And sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Yeah, and it's just um, think about how good God is. Like that's that like people amen. say spirit, like praise God. And I used to be like, what does that mean? To, like break out into song. Like I don't know what that and no, no, it's it's actually sit and meditate on mm -hmm. the how good God is, like how, like the things he's done for you, the things in the scripture uh that show us his character and how how much he loves us and how just awesome he is, just how how clever and to me that's something that really goes I when I think about how clever and in my opinion very funny God is these things once you start thinking about those things even for just a few minutes you'll notice that your mood totally lifts whether you're not even realizing it and then uh if you but you have to stay in that you have to mm -hmm. stay in that that mindset mm -hmm. and, but if you do which is where you should be anyway it you feel a hundred percent different it really that's it really right. works you just have to remember to do it Yes, and you I must don't. Do I it. forget to do it a lot lately, but I, but it, but it, but it does work when you remember to do it, and it works like better than anything. That's why you're always on cloud nine when you're uh, just you just get saved. Yeah, you know when you really first because you know, you're truly, thankful. <laughs> yes, that's why you're for so what happy. the Lord has done, and the Bible yep. says, "In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you." And when you do that, it just lifts that heaviness. I told you, uh, I was on a broadcast. I think it was last week on fun fellowship friday um the week before or something maybe and i was talking about how i had this really crappy job and i hated the job and the lord just showed me you know do this as as you're doing unto me just as the scripture says do it as as though you're working for me and i'm like okay i'm working for the lord okay so now when i hit a challenge it was like okay jesus you're gonna get me through you're gonna help me with this Come on, Jesus, we're going to do, we're going to get this done. We gonna, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And in doing that, it lifted that heaviness and that ugly feeling I had, because now I'm doing it for the Lord. And I literally could start rejoicing, even through some absolute crappy stuff they had me doing. It just changed your attitude. And when you get that attitude of gratitude, then that heaviness just lifts. But before we continue, I wanted to ask, and I'm not going to put your business in the street, B.B. Jones out there. I see you. Um, you had said something you had asked me to pray for, and I'm not going to spe specify what it is. But I wanted to know how did that work out for you because you're in my prayers. Uh, just just let me know. Uh, I'm glad to see you here tonight. You said with that situation on your job. I remembered you. I, I, don't, I don't tell people y'all contact me for prayer and I don't pray. That's not the case. This is not a game. It's not a show. We're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. People it, call me and I'll say, sister, I need you to pray. And I'll be like, okay, it is, this is not a game. We're the real dealio. We're real believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Ben, I'm going to make you talk because I want you to give uh, a dissertation in just a minute or two here on the gospel. So how about you going and preach the gospel for us? Ben, did I catch you off guard? Yes, you did. Right now? 
I know, but you should always be prepared. You're supposed to be instant in season and out of season. <laughs> yes, right now, what you going to lay the gospel on us? All right, well, just so you know, I do do f five streams every week, and I uh, am put on the spot a lot, so... Uh, you can only, you guys can only bully me so much. I'm just teasing. Oh uh, te well, don't don't think it like a, a, a prepackaged gospel <laughs> presentation. Why don't you just like actually like expound on what the gospel is? And and it, for me, the pressure of doing it very quickly was what mm -hmm. made me nervous. But if you just oh, I don't want to tell, tell us. Yeah. as much time as he wants. Yeah. Okay, I will do it. Um, I I like to do it. I'll do it in the way that I, I like. I like it. Um, taught. Um. And again, I'm not perfect at it, so bear with me. But um, the way I like to like it is to to um, focus on the identification truths. So um, when again, I like to start back in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve uh, were uh, innocent. They weren't righteous. Righteous means you're perfect. You, you, it means you don't even have the potential to sin. It's out. It, righteousness means you, it's not in your character to sin. Um, but Adam and Eve were innocent. Uh, in the flesh, and they were told not to eat the garden. Uh, they had, there were two trees in the garden, or there are many trees, but there were two trees in particular in the middle of the garden, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And uh, I believe that the, the tr tree of good and evil, knowledge of good and evil, uh, was very appealing. The fruit was very appealing to look at because um, that's what the law, it's a picture of the law of, and... It, it the law is very um, enticing to look at. It, it, we look at people that are more holy than us, or at living a more holy life, uh, or even even like the people in the Pope, the Pope and whatnot. You know, they have all this gold and fancy robes. They look holy as an unsafe person. That they they seem right to you, um, but uh, the pick the, that that was a law of truth, the knowledge of truth, good and evil. The fruit, I believe, again was probably glistening in the sunlight and very. Uh, uh, very uh, bright in color, and there was another tree called the Tree of Life, and uh, the Tree of Life, I believe, is a picture or a type of Christ, and when Christ came, Isaiah said that he had no form of or comeliness that we would desire him, and so uh, just as Christ physically in person was not, you know, particularly attractive that we would, we would be drawn to him, I believe the Tree of Life was also probably uh not particularly uh, interesting to look at. And so their eyes were probably, I believe they fell pretty soon after they were created, not not long. Um, if there even was a time was even a thing, I'm not, I'm not sure. But um, the, I believe they were probably drawn not to the tree of life because there's nothing that was appealing to it, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes, that fruit, that stood out. That looked very enticing. And so, uh, again, I, I doubt, I, I don't believe they ever ate from the tree of, of, tree of life because... When they were kicked out of the garden, uh, God said that uh, it had the, they were the guard. The entrance to the garden was closed off by uh, two angels, so that it could not enter and take of the tree of life and live forever in their flesh in a sinful state. Um, and so again, I, I don't. I personally don't. This is speculation. It's not critical to the gospel. I personally don't think that um, it is. Uh, that they ever did eat from the uh, garden of, uh, I'm sorry, they never ate of the tree of life. They, they soon after very quickly were drawn to that tree of knowledge of good and evil. They ate it. And when they ate it, um, you know, just as in life, people say, what you, what you eat, you are what you eat. Well, spiritually, that's true too. So they ate of the knowledge of good and evil. And when they ate it, it, it became part of them. Uh, it's like experientially, they, it became part of them. So uh, soon after they ate of it, um, it, the Bible talks about one thing early in Genesis that, that, that is emphasized over and over again, uh, kind of peculiarly, and I God's trying to draw our attention to it, is that God created all things to beget after its own kind. So uh, a fruit tree uh, begets a fruit tree, uh, you know, uh, an elephant begets an elephant, um, so it, a dog begets after a dog. And so all things are um, uh, the generative principle is that all things beget after its own kind. And so Adam and Eve ate of the garden of, of tree, good and evil. They immediately noticed that they were naked and they ran from God and they, they hid from God. Um, and they tried to protect themselves with their own, with fig leaves, which they, again, they were trying to protect them. They want, they didn't want God and each other to see their own nakedness. Um, and that nakedness is really a, a, a picture of sin. Um, and that they were not righteous, or they they didn't have any protection, um, so they were kicked out of the garden. 
but as soon after they were kicked out of the garden, they uh, they quote unquote knew each other, which is a, a biblical euphemism for um, sexual intercourse. And when they knew it, when they knew each other, they became one flesh. Um, so just as Adam and Eve, when they knew each other, they became one flesh. Um, when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that also again became part of their flesh. The the, the sin principle, if you will, now governs our flesh. Uh, ever since then, and and when Adam and Eve knew each other, they begat after their own kinds because uh, when they ate of the knowledge of tree, good and evil, they became sinners. They, they they became knowledgeable that they they were sinful, and uh, when they gen when they had offspring, beginning after their own kind, everyone thereafter became a sinner. We don't sin because um, we're sinners. I'm sorry, we sin because we're sinners. We don't uh, we're not sinners because we sin. It's our very character. It's in our very makeup, um, and so all men uh, after that have become sinners. We're, we're diseased. We're sick, uh, and we, there's nothing we can do to uh, heal ourselves. There, it, it, God didn't. God knows that there was no way for us to um, to heal ourselves. There's no. There's no reforming the flesh, and that's why God said, "You know what." I need. I'm going to start over. I'm going to chop down that family tree of Adam, and I'm going to create a new tree that is righteous. So in Adam, we all were born from a rotten tree with rotten fruit, and that's why God said, "Okay, I'm going to chop down that tree, and I'm going to create a new tree, and it's going to have it's it's going to be based on righteousness, and it's going to uh, have righteous fruit." So just as Adam and Eve, when they had children, they were con that 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 child was considered uh, conceived in lust. Again, lust is a uh, manifestation of the flesh, and when we're conceived in Christ, we are born through sacrifice, and um, that's why we need to be born again. Everyone outside of God, I see kind of God is a circle, a mem. A, a, if you think of a, of a circle like an organism, and it has a membrane around it, and I see that membrane or that protective shield. Um, uh, kind of like a porcupine, if you will. Um, it, it had all those uh, spikes and thorns are a picture of the law. So the law keeps out anything from coming in and permeating that, that perfect circle that is God, uh, that is righteous, and all things like the fruit of the Spirit, you know, like uh, love, trust, um, gentleness, long-suffering, etc. Those are all fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's God in that kind of circle, but everything outside of it, is um, the exact opposite of that. It's it represents uh, evil, and so we 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 were born outside of that circle, and so there's no there's nothing we can there's no way we can permeate that boundary on our own. That's why we need to be born again, uh, because there's no there's no open door, if you will, into heaven. Um, the only open door, or only legal loophole, essentially, is Christ Himself, because He fulfilled the law, and that's why we need to be need to be born again in Him. And so, when we believe in Christ, He takes a, take He ends our history in in the family tree of Adam. He plugs that hole for us, essentially, in that rotten family tree, and He births us births births us again. Born again means born from above. We were born from a below. Now we need to be born again from above. So we don't. We don't permeate that boundary ourselves. There's no, there's no, there's no way any man could climb over that wall. Uh, that's why we need to be born with again within it, like transported almost. And so when we believe on Christ, who Christ was the Son of God, He was the only begotten Son of God. So He was the very essence of God Himself. He was came into our reality, lived a perfect life. He fulfilled all righteous demands that God uh, required of man, and and when he was crucified and died, he paid for the full sin debt, the full sin debt of every man. So every every sin you could even conceive and, and, and couldn't conceive, Christ paid for it. He became he became sin, he became sin for us. And actually, when the Bible says he became sin for us, it has the definite article in front of it. So he became the sin. So sin is personified in that in that sense. We are the sin. We are our personality our, our person is the sin so he became the sin for us so that includes everything that you are or ever do or failed to do he became that sin so that we may become the righteousness in christ we, we receive the righteousness of god because we're born again in him perfect we start over from a uh, a clean slate I, one of the memes that lisa has that i think is wonderful is uh how do you get back to zero in terms of your sins so even if you were from this day forward to say, oh, well, 
uh, I'm going to live a perfect life. And even if that was theoretically possible, which it isn't, but even if it was, you you still have to, there's still a sin debt for, for all the sins you, that accumulated up to that point. And there's no way to get back to zero. And that's why you need to be born again. And so you receive a new identity in Christ. You're the son of God. You're no longer an enemy. Um, you know, the, the, the law uh, is unwelcoming. Uh, it, it, it demands righteousness. It's unwelcoming. It drives you away, whereas grace is the exact opposite. That's why you see in the Bible all the time, with, with refer to, referring to grace, it always says, come, come, gather with me. And so grace is welcoming, uh, and uh, Christ is welcoming you, and God is welcome, welcoming you to believe on him so that you may be born again. And the very nanosecond you believe, you receive eternal life. God crucifies the old man. You're dead to the world. You're dead to sin. Uh, all your passions and desires that you have, that you still have in this fallen body, from God's perspective, they were crucified with Christ. And so, um, so if you again, if you believe on Christ, you're born again, even though you still car carry around the sinful nature and you will continue to sin. Uh, in God's eyes, you, you, you not only have never sinned, but you cannot sin. You're born of a new incorruptible seed. And so, if you haven't believed on Christ, uh, all you need to do is take have a moment of faith, and the moment you believe, you're born again, and uh, I welcome you as a brother or sister. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Ben, for that very erudite amen. explanation. You included the back history behind why we need a Savior, uh, and I appreciate that. Thank you so very much because a lot of people which is really important because like if you were talking to someone like me like mm -hmm. i needed to hear that i knew what i was supposed to believe i didn't know why and i didn't know and, and right. i didn't know why it would make sense that it was just like what like this is so weird and arbitrary this is the thing that will give me like i i needed to understand right. it and so ne never underestimate how important that part is when you are giving the gospel especially to people of this generation who 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 don't take for granted they understand the point of of why you know the, the death burial and resurrection of christ they, that, if that doesn't make sense to them then like if they don't understand why that would save them then right. it's very hard to believe it uh you, you know it, just saying it doesn't do it like oh because he imputed you know you get his righteousness imputed if that doesn't make sense or sound logical or mm -hmm. click in the place like oh wait that's oh i get it completely that's why god did it that way they won't be able to believe it that you know and so help them reason with god by tell you know like what ben did was perfect i i would have loved to hear that <laughs> when i was enough mm -hmm. i would have done a trick mm -hmm. i agree yeah explaining why you need a savior to begin with going all the way back to the beginning thank you so much brother ben i appreciate that sister angel we're not gonna let ben get off the hook we're gonna make him talk <laughs> okay as you can see he can talk very well so we're gonna make him talk we're going to talk about men. So yeah. I'm going to let you kick off the conversation started where you want to start it on what we're talking about. We were talking about this. We actually got off the broadcast last week and started our own conversation. Yeah. About an hour and a half in, Ben jumped off. He's like, good night. He didn't even say good night. He just split, <laughs> which I'm not mad at him. Yeah, for. We, we were, were going we on for a long time. I don't yeah, think we gave him any space to talk. Right. Uh, so we talked and we got to talking about men. We went on for about three hours, I guess. So after the broadcast, y'all, now we don't went three or uh, four hours on the broadcast and we talking for another three hours. But right. we started talking about men. And I said, you know what? We should talk about this on the broadcast. I think it was a very good conversation we had about yes. this. So I'd like you to go ahead and explain what we were talking about. Well, um, so we were we were talking about the sort of the, the differences between men and women uh, to start out. We were talking about how, um, like, for instance, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to women that are lost, especially and they don't they don't believe the word of God. And so they they don't uh, really acknowledge, you know, how, how women were created and what, what women were created as sort of a as a help me. And we have natural tendencies. Not every woman is I'm certainly not like a typical woman. I mean, I, I, I find it flattering because all the time now people will think that I'm actually a guy pretending to be a girl, even just from my comments, not, I'm not saying from my photo because they don't think the way I t type the things I write out, they think I'm actually just pretending because of, so I know I'm not saying that every woman is alike. Women are, are individual, but there are certain tendencies women have in general. 
uh, that they were they would need to have because Guy wanted a certain type of family unit. He wanted a, a synergy between men and women. So he created men and women to generally have certain characteristics, right? And women have rejected a lot of this now because they don't believe in the Bible and they think, you know, that they, they're all kinds of crazy, <laughs> basically with the feminism stuff um, where they're, you know, to the point now where they're celebrating the right, the fact that it's legal to murder their own children in their womb. They consider that the height of freedom. Like that's how insane women are today. And um, we were talking about the differences between men and, men and women and how, like what we're seeing in Europe, for instance, uh, how, how certain tendencies can run amok and cause um, cause chaos in a society, right? Where, where especially with, if women don't recognize that they, a lot of times their emotions and their, uh, their, 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 the fact that they're designed to mother children uh, actually drive them, whether they like it or not, they will supplement those urges into the wrong thing. Like we see in Europe where these women are throwing themselves on the ground and chaining themselves to things because somebody's trying to deport a, a, a rapist from uh, like some, the illegal immigrant rapist who's raped a bunch of people and they're trying to deport him back to his country and they're acting like, no, this is evil, this is fascism because they don't realize they've supplemented, made it their um, nurturing instincts toward these, what we call, you know, like these immigrants, vulnerable people in our society. That's why we see a lot of this like liberalism that women are the first defenders of because they have rejected, the, you know, they've rejected their, their role as nurturer in the true sense and why that, you know, why God created them to have these urges. And now they, they it bleeds out into like inappropriate, unhealthy ways because they're not acknowledging the truth of God's word. So that was what led us into talking about also what, you know, men and where men have, um, in the modern times gone wrong and how all this started because a lot of times now we'll see and like what we call the manosphere or even like the men's rights movement and all this stuff uh men who are understandably very bent out of shape about women modern women the divorce courts um feminism all this stuff that's very anti-man but they have begun to basically blame women for the reason society is the way it is and Although I would agree that women are causing major chaos and destruction in, in the world, especially because, you know, especially women that don't understand or believe their, their you know, the Bible and, and mm -hmm. what God has given us as a, as a, you know, basically just a basic framework of, okay, so this is what you guys are kind of created to do. And I've made, you know, obviously I would want women to be more agreeable and, and, um, and nurturing because that women need to do this kind of thing. And men are going to be more take charge and, uh, uh, you know, like logical, because, you know, we fulfill different roles. This is not doesn't mean that every woman is this way. Trust me. Um, uh, I'm, you know, but it's a general rule. And we can see it in society, right? We can see it overall. This is true. But men are, I believe, they, they were given sort of an authority or a headship um, for a reason also just created naturally to be to, to generally be better leaders. We all know there are exceptions. We had like Deborah, but generally, um, you know, the men are creative for these roles because women uh, are 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 the best to serve at home and to be mothers and homemakers to their children, which is an extremely important role. Women don't appreciate like that's what makes it worth a man's time to go to work and do everything that he does. The woman is at home making that life worth working for, worth providing for, making a home that he's happy to come home to. That's what that is. That's and without that, without that like trade off people are lost and, and mm -hmm. depressed and miserable, especially when women are trying to, now everybody's rivals. They're trying to do the same jobs badly. Like, you know, both are trying to be breadwinners and also like split the, you know, time raising the children. Uh, and they're really just rivals. They're not, they're not complimentary. They are, uh, you know, uh, roommates that are co competing for the same roles. And this is totally backwards. And this is why divorce is happening. But men who, you know, are getting really mistreated in the courts and um, especially, you know, in like family court and uh, and just overall in society, women and men are getting blamed for everything, beat up on. But now they're they're embracing this victimhood mentality where women are the bad. It's all women's fault. And, the, you know, women are the, the you know, destroyers of society and they're evil. They're having these MGTOW things, which really just ends up in homosexuality. I don't care what even says men mm -hmm. going their own way. They end up gay. That's what happens. You know, they're going their own way. They're not going to deal with women anymore. Well, a lot of them are ending up gay. 
because they're so they they, they 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 get so enraged with women and it's all women's fault i've had multiple men even when i'm posting things on youtube and comments about how i don't think women should vote they'll just start attacking me because i'm a woman <laughs> still and they're just mad at women and so i'm a woman even though i'm saying stuff that maybe even is more like misogynist quote unquote than what they're saying they're just mad and beating up on me because they're just you know filled with contempt and what it is is they're blaming women and god will never honor that because that's what adam did it's actually women have the power men have given them and it was convenient for men mm. to hand over the power it was a convenient trade-off because with the power comes responsibility so when they started letting women play politics and get their you know get get all into politics and, and control everybody's life which is what what women tend to do when they're deal in politics they're they're not meant for that because they try to mommy everybody and and that's what they're you know, when we get all this liberal BS nanny state because of women, I truly believe. But, um, and, and if you look at their voting records since they got the vote, <laughs> it's abysmal. It's destroyed the country. So I'm, you know, and it, it, that's, uh, that's my feeling on it. And uh, I do understand why men are bent out of shape. But the problem is, is that that mentality where you blame somebody else, for, no matter what it is, God will not honor it or, or, or respect it. It's always bad when you're blaming somebody else for 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 your own failings right and when just because you've had bad relationships or divorced right and 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 there will always be a way god can god can humble you and show you how no it was your fault no it was not that person's fault because god doesn't respect victim mentality no matter what it is and um with men the thing is is <laughs> adam did this very thing he did something wrong he his the eve was deceived she ate adam was not deceived he still like, and then the first thing he did was he blamed her <laughs> for what he did. And this is a trend that has repeated ever since. And so with these men who are, who are countering feminism, while I agree fem feminism is bad, if you really look at it, they have decided to place all the blame for the way the world is today on the shoulders of women. When in reality, women will fall in line with a show of force. Most women will fall in line with a show of force. They will, they are built to follow. And if there's a strong leader, they will follow that 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 leader. That's just not, you know not all women. I'm a little headstrong, but most women, when you see them running amok, it's because of a failure of leadership in the men of that society. Women are a reflection of men because men are fit. Listen, women could not physically take power from men. At the end of the day, if Very... women have power, it's because men took gave it to them. Why did they give it to them? Free love, no commitment. Uh, this whole feminist movement was more beneficial to men, at least in the immediate sense, than it was to anybody. They did, you know, they didn't have to work for uh, sex anymore. They could mm -hmm. just, you know, women were just throwing it around. And really, that was the lure. That was mm -hmm. the lure. And that destroyed society. And mm -hmm. um, now, the, but see, now this bitterness that, that men are getting toward women because they, they see that, you know, all this feminism stuff and how toxic women are. Uh, it's ridiculous and childish and God hates it because mm -hmm. <laughs> women can change. And most of those women are angry. They're angry and they are, they don't trust. And a lot of them don't trust for good reason because men don't know what their role is anymore. They don't know how to be men and women have to, you know what women have to do if they're going to give you their body in terms of to like bearing their children, mm -hmm. they're going to give you their best years of earning potential by staying home with the children to, mm -hmm. to, to, to nurse them and everything. If you want them to be worth a damn as a mom, at least. Um, and uh, they have to give up a whole lot to trust yeah. you that you're going to take care of them. You're not going to cheat on them and leave them and all that stuff. Or, you know, it's not going to end in disaster. You're not going to screw up and, and, and not mm -hmm. keep a secure place for the family, for the children. They don't mm -hmm. trust men today uh, uh, because, because men don't really abide in that role. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And it's partly because they've been told it's sexist to do so. But why are they listening to that crap? Why are you listening to these crazy women who tell you what <laughs> what is and what isn't? Why are you listening? You're supposed to be the leader. You're supposed to be strong and stand up and say this is how it's going to be. And women love that. I don't care how much they say they don't like it. They love it. And 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 women will trust and submit to a man that they, well, women will submit to a man that they trust and respect. They will not boom, submit boom. to you. Okay, <laughs> I gotta stop you. I gotta, yes, go on. Yeah. I've been waiting for you to make that a point. I want you to develop yes. your thoughts because yes. I want to bring Ben in and let him say uh, what he thinks about some of the things we're saying. But yes. um, <laughs> 
<laughs> boom, drop the mic. And this is what, now, I don't think anybody perceives me as being a weak woman. I don't think I come off that way, but I will straight say that most women that I know, even the strong type A women, if we see a man who knows who he is, honey, over the moon, over the top, go, boy, oh, yeah. go. we be like, get it, <laughs> get it, baby. Because, yeah. you know, it's not, when, first of all, when you know who you are, this is why it's important to know, first of all, who you are in Christ, so he can straighten all these other things out that society has done to us. But, uh, you know, and, and, and the imperfections in family, et cetera, that we have to just submit to Christ to get back in realignment. When we start doing that, we look, we, I don't have no problem with a man taking the lead. Go right ahead. But here's the problem. They don't understand a lot of men. And you, you talked about it, and I'm going to extrapolate a little bit further, which is if, if I'm on a ship and you're supposed to be the captain and you decide you're going to go take a nap and you don't want to do what needs to be done to be up there and be the captain, and I don't want to die, and I don't want my children to die, I'm going to take the helm. I'm just going to take the lead because I don't want the ship to go down. And this is what happens with a lot of women. They get left holding or they take the stern wheel because they're like, dude, you're being reckless. You're not paying attention. You ain't focused. You ain't handling your business. They don't trust. And they them. don't really know what they're doing either. No one's saying they no. know what they're doing. No, I ain't saying that we doing, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah, but we're not, not good gonna, at we, it. We're going to go <laughs> down <laughs> swinging if we got to yes, go down. Exactly. But they would just abdicate. And this is where we see the problem comes in. If a man abdicates, the woman's like, well, I might. What? Okay, take for example, if a woman has two or three children, one, it doesn't even matter how many, and a man leaves her, what is she supposed to do? Roll over and die? No, she's got to step up and be the leader of that family and take care of those children and support them and nurture them and be the mother and the father. So when men see this and think this, okay, that's, you know, and, and start believing this crap that they put on TV and everything else that this is okay and these are the social norms and we should just accept it and this is how it is and how convenient for how them. convenient and this is the perspective that we were talking about last week because you know listen I, like I said you always hear I'll always say it a woman has just as much right to self-determination as any man but what a woman usually does is she looks at a man and she decides can I trust this dude with my life because that's literally what's happening. If you're going to be the homemaker and raising the children, then that man got to step up and be the one that's going to take care of business. And if you can't trust him, you can't do that. And so this is the, this is the problem that we see going on, the dynamic that we see going on uh, in, in a lot of ways. There's some other aspects, but this is one of the main problems. But like I said, I don't have no problem... Dude, don't don't tempt me with an easy life. I get to stay home and just nurture children and take care of babies and, you know, prepare the home, which is what women were created to do. Now, you'd probably be surprised to say to hear me say that I'm not stupid. I can see right here in the Bible exactly what started from the beginning and how it's all always been. We live in a country that has perverted all of that and twisted it out, turned it upside down, backwards, flipped it, threw it out the window. And women have had to assume other roles that they shouldn't have ever had to do because life isn't perfect. Society isn't perfect. People aren't perfect. We aren't perfect. They don't get it right. We don't get it right. But if we're not submitted to Christ, this is where all these problems come in. When people start being submitted to Christ, both the man and the woman, being sub submitted to Christ as the head of the family, the head of the the house, as it were, and then the man under Christ and then the woman right there behind him, trusting that he's going to do the right things that he's supposed to. Women don't have a problem with that. But when men abdicate or, oh, I'm too busy looking at her over there and they're not doing the things that they're charged to do as a man of God that's in these scriptures and they abdicate and they falter and they fail. And women feel like they can't trust and then they take the helm and then you see the the problem that the problems that end up happening. And they don't know that's why they're doing it oftentimes. They right. don't know, like they don't understand why they're behaving the way they are. Um, 
but, uh, and they've believed a lot of lies, but the fact mm-hmm. is, as a, if you really zoom out, if you zoom out and look at the past 50 years as a whole, that's what's happened. And, and, and it's a, it's a self-perpetuate because, uh, especially now, everybody's so screwed up that they think, like, I mean, I don't know how, it's just normal for men to say things like, yeah, well, you know, if you're a man, you're supposed to spread your seed. I mean, evolution wise, you know, blood evolution is a complete lie. They think it's like that they're supposed to be promiscuous and that, and that it's unnatural, but like a good thing, but just, you know, hard. It's not, it's not the same when men cheat as it is women. It's like, they think that God, and if they claim to believe in God, this is the worst part because they, what you think God created you innately to be incapable of following, you know, his commands. You really think that then that would make Mm -hmm. him evil. He did not create. No, that was sin. The fall did that to where that's why we deal with lust. But you were not created to cheat on your wife when God ordered you to be with one man and one woman. But women think now that that all men uh, are. And I I haven't experienced. Yeah. And I haven't experienced this. I haven't really ever been truly cheated on. Um, Mm -hmm. um, uh, And, uh, uh, you know, I have not. To me, you know, men aren't like this, but. Um, I know for, I mean, I know a lot of, you know, women who have men that really are, and they did a lot of awful things um, and men think it's normal and that they're supposed to, and that they're kind of like sacrificing this to be in a marriage and women are just supposed to accept that. And that makes women bitter because it's not true. It's not the truth of God's word. And, and that's one of the reasons why I, I truly believe women are so angry and all the time at men, because now they're supposed to just deal with the fact that men are, supposedly just naturally promiscuous and they're kind of like stepping outside of what their natural way of being to be monogamous. Mm-hmm. It's really prevalent that people think this this mentality and that just inherently puts bitterness in a woman's mind and her heart towards men, uh, especially if she's seen her father cheat on her mother, father abandon mm-hmm. her mother. And they're angry all the time, all the time. And, and men don't realize that as the leader, you've got to be the bigger person first. For women, you really do. If, if you're the head, if you're going to be the yes. leader, leaders. Yeah. Lead. If you have this and- rightful authority, you're saying that women are interfering with. Well, that's what. <laughs> guess what? That means the blame is on you too. It's the right. Blame for the way things are. It's because of men. Mm-hmm. It's what men aren't doing, really. And women are just like, I'm. You know, this is embarrassing, but really, today at least, women are just kind of like children, who mm-hmm. are like permanent te- te- teenagers now. Who, who, and that's why they keep voting the way they do to be given things and just irrational things that make no sense. Uh, unlimited immigration, also free healthcare. Not possible, ladies. Sorry about that. You can't have both. You can't have unlimited uh, immigration and then free healthcare for everybody. That, if you think about it, just think it through a little bit there, lady. Um, it, it won't work because everybody will come here. And uh, they, yeah, they just, they vote with their feelings and they feel very entitled to everything. Just entitled to just, the, the 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 state is now that the what the husband was supposed to be. That's what women exactly. Uh, I, I, well, I was hoping you would make that point, and it, and it removes the headship of Christ, which yep. is the center which we're all supposed to be submitted to, and seeking for our sustenance, our provision, our direction, our guidance. And if we're not doing that as a collective unit, both husband and wife the man and the woman, even if they're single, that's supposed to still be our focus. And we're talking about as believers. I'm not talking about yeah. the world. We know the world is crazy. We're talking about in, in Christ, but we see the church exhibiting these same problems because they're getting their examples from the world and they're forgetting, uh-uh, my example is supposed to be Christ. My supposed, example is supposed to be his headship and I'm supposed to be seeking him and uh, uh, seeking the Lord for everything that I need concerning my sustenance, my provision, my just everything. And then hopefully you have a man who is submitted to Christ that is doing the same thing. And you come together and you do it together. But <laughs> but that's not what we're seeing. And and it's sad. It's sad we to see the damage and the shipwreck that is that's doing to people's lives. Uh and, and even even people don't even know what love is. Oh, if I see one more demonic example of what love is. You know, I just don't even know what to do. I tell you, I keep wanting to break my TV when I see this crap because it's it's absolute garbage. This this oh, it's a warm, touchy feely, tingling thing. You know, and they don't understand that love is a decision and a commitment yeah. that one has yeah. made. What and happens? God will is, honor it. Yes, honor you're looking it. at what you see. that fuzzy feeling. You'll keep having it if you're right. submitted to God and you have the right kind of love. You, it's not always, you won't have it every single day, all day long, 
But right. I know with my husband, I only love I only love him more uh, than I, I mean I love him more. Yeah, there's got to be the more there for when the the warm and fuzzies go away. Exactly. <laughs> There's that exactly. commitment and dedication, understanding what love is. I, I just, Angel, I told you an example uh, when my nephew came to me years ago. Yes. When he decided he wanted to marry. And I'm going to share it with everyone again because I, I, and then we're going to get Ben. Ben's not getting away. So, so <laughs> uh, he came to me. He said, Auntie, how do you know when you love someone? And I knew he was considering this young lady he had been courting. And I said, mm. I said, well, baby, let me let me tell you a story. I said, let's say that you have decided you've looked at this person. You see all these wonderful qualities and how they not only make you feel, but you've decided based on everything you know about them, you love them. Right. You going, I think I love you. Right. So let's say one day you guys get into an argument and you're angry. But before that argument, let's say she had a. Um, uh, interview the next morning and she said, sweetie, I'm not going to be able to pick up my dry cleaning. Will you swing by and pick it up before I get off work? Cause I don't have time for the interview tomorrow. And you go, okay, I'm going to do it. Then y'all get into this argument, but you don't promised her you would do that for her. And y'all, you go on about your day. You even think about the argument. You think I'm still mad at her. Every time I think about it, I get more angry. But then you remember that dry cleaning you promised you'd pick up and you go, Oh, let me go on and get it. Why? You love her and you don't want to mess her up. See, love lets you know when somebody makes you angry or, or disappoints you or whatever, it's what you would do to them in that situation, not, <laughs> not the warm and fuzzy feelings. See, uh, another example would yes. be, I heard this lady say, and I never forgot it. I loved it. She said, don't look at somebody and say, is this somebody I could be married to? Look at them and say, is this somebody I could be divorced from? Because how they treat their enemies is how they're going to treat you when they're angry. So in other words, you're looking for the integrity. You're looking for character in that person. So then when, if they love their enemies and they're kind and they turn the other cheek and they don't do railing for railing, and that's the kind of person you want to be married to. Because when they're angry at you, that's what's coming at you. <laughs> so, integrity. Integrity. You know, is integrity so and big. character. That is what made me fall in love with Joel. And I, 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 I can say this. I, he and I have maybe like three or four arguments a year, but they last no longer than like, like the actual argument. And most of this time is just, is it is after he walks away and, and stews about it for a second, and realizes that he lost his temper or something and that he has to do. <laughs> we talk about like 20 minutes over and then are super happy to make up. Uh, because we don't, it like hurts. It's, it's miserable to be yes, with one yes. another. It hurts. And, and, and they're over, it's over like, with, like he basically it's usually over because he doesn't, he kind of will get passive aggressive where he doesn't want to, Not it, it's not because he's being a jerk. It's because he doesn't really like want to make me feel bad. So if I do something that upsets him, he won't say anything about it until he gets really mad. He has to work up the nerve to tell me something I've done has bothered him. And then you know, and then it's just really short because I'm pretty straightforward. I always, if you, if I'm mad, you know, and you know why uh, I don't get that mad that mm. often. Um, but uh, in our, you know, our relationship, the, the, the thing that I think is different than any other relationship I've had is that even from the beginning, um, when we first started dating and he like broke my heart because he didn't, he thought I was just, I don't know, too young and naive. Like he didn't, he just like, didn't want to date me. I was too immature. To, you know, he didn't want to get serious with me. Um, I didn't want to hurt him. I wanted him to still be happy, even though I wasn't getting what I wanted from him. I had never really felt that way with anybody else. Uh, and it was, a, I realized, well, wow, that's really sick. It's sick mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm actually, you know, noticing like, well, I don't want to destroy his life. I still want him. I still want good things for him. I still want him to be happy. This was genuine, a genuine feeling that I had for him. And it was because I respected him. I respected mm -hmm. him, like him, him, not just what I wanted from him. Most people, that's what they really see. They see what they what you want. They want from somebody else. They want the the, the feeling that person. It's like a drug. That's how they treat people. It's like drugs. Where mm -hmm. I want I'm, I'm sexually attracted to you, and I want your validation, and I want I want all this stuff from you. And if you don't give that to me, um, then you're you know you're useless. And you know maybe they even mm -hmm. want to hurt you because of it. But um, mm -hmm. that won't work well in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have just you know I, I really believe that that. You, you always need you need to appreciate the person that you're with because 
if they're the father of your children mm -hmm. or the mother of your children, understand like, and listen, my first child is from my ex. So I'm not saying that no step parent can be, uh, uh, love your children because Joel uh, loves right. Lucy. Like, I mean, they, they're, they're closer than she and I are and have been from the start, but generally speaking, nobody in the world is going to love your children the way that person does. That's who's you, you know, you had them with. And that means they're precious as they, they, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. There's nobody else that, who could replace them. Now, obviously and that, that should be the case. A lot of people don't love their children anymore. A lot of people are just mm -hmm. without natural affection. So my apologies if that's you, but also understand that if you're, if the person you're with, if they're not saved, if they're lost, you know, that's, that's the big problem. Like it's very hard to call, counsel like my friend uh, on her marriage because she, both her and her husband are unbelievers. And I know that's really like nothing can, because they're so bad. Like everything is backwards. Like they can't, uh, if they're not starting off on the right foot under Christ, it's mm -hmm. like, how, I, there's no solving this. Like I should just tell them to divorce unless they're going to believe mm -hmm. because like, they're just, they don't know what the truth is. And so they don't have the Holy spirit and the Holy spirit really does help us in our, in our, you know, in our relationships. I really mm -hmm. believe that because I do like, you know, I've noticed with me and with Joel. So since I got saved now, he believed even as a child, but kind of lapsed until I got saved. And, um, he, uh, you know, that like brought him back to faith. But I, I, I do believe now that I, I believe he was saved as a child because it was the true gospel they believe. But uh, the Holy Spirit helps our relationship, helps us have humility to where we don't mm -hmm. pridefully want to win. No, we're not trying to win anything. And that's a really big thing in an argument. You can argue, but if all you care about is being right and winning, right. it's toxic. It's, and, I, and I've never mm -hmm. been that way. Like, so... Uh, I've really never been that way, but also like now with, with him, it's like, I see the Holy spirit kind of bringing that pride down and bringing it like, like what matters right. is the truth. And it makes it easier to do the right thing in a relationship and being when, submitted to Christ. Exactly. It's so, yes. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and then when you, when you start dealing with the submission to Christ, and the, and what we learn of him in the scriptures and what we learn from him by the leading of the Holy Spirit and we submit to that, he puts you in check because he the other person he going to deal with. So he's dealing with you where you at. And if you honor him, the other person's going to see the honor you're doing to him. <laughs> and then that humbles Absolutely. them and changes them. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, they have to see the change in you and go. This this thing is real for you, especially if they're not saved. This thing is real for you. You live yes. in why you live in why you living it because you submitting to Christ. Anyway, let me stop right there. And that won't Finn. make you perfect, but it's just you're you're at, even if you mess up. Right. The right. way you deal with the fact that you messed up that will mm -hmm. match what you claim. Exactly. To so it won't exactly. prevent you from messing up, but you will be humble and apologize and care about exactly. the truth. Exactly. Not being right over everything yep. else. Yep. Okay, we only got about 20 or so minutes left. So I want to let Ben just yes. rant and tell us how we're wrong with everything we said. <laughs> no. Well, if let he me thinks just so. tell you, you silly women. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> he thinks we're too hard on women. No, but um, one thing I heard a long time ago, and uh, uh, Angel, you said something earlier before the uh, broadcast, and I don't mean to be crude, but this is very true. For, if you want to understand men, this is very true because someone said this and I was like, wow, yeah, that's that's totally right. Men want women to be their mother and their whore simultaneously. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that's crude, but um, now that, that's that's mostly for an unsaved man, you know, or a carnal man. Yeah. Uh, when, when the Holy Spirit's involved in it. Or the Madonna whore syndrome, I've heard it called too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, I mentioned earlier too, I'm much more critical of men because I know what it's like to be a man, and and, and I, again, I don't mean to. If you're offended, and you're you're taking it the wrong way. Um, I'm taking talking about this biblically here. That I've always known that women are the weaker weaker vessel, um, weaker. I think more like emotionally, um, not not like intellectually or anything like that, but just more emotionally and things like that. And I've always known that, uh, and I've always been uh, truly strong in that sense. Um, and I think one of the reasons women. Um, well, one thing in particular, I've always been more critical of men because I've I've seen them falling down on the job 
like you know woefully and it, it is it's even as a kid like i i you know i always thought it was like just pathetic of other males just the way they were where they would be willing to um uh, they, uh you know the whole thing of being buddies you know going out and poker night and drinking and you know stupid it's like poker night i know that's so dumb like it's, and that's entitled they're entitled to it yeah and I, listen women doing this too when especially when they're married oh i want to go out with the girls to the club wait what why do you want to, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I wouldn't want, like, that's weird. Like, I don't want to go get drunk around a bunch of dudes with, like, my single female friends. Like, I would just be weird. I don't see how that anything could become of that. But men, that was, I, I want to say this, Joel, that was the, that's the revelation with him, is he, he doesn't feel like he's missing out by coming home and being with us. If you feel that way as a man, there might be something wrong because that's what he wants to do. If you want the same thing in a marriage, there's no resentment. But I, he doesn't mm -hmm. have this thing where, oh, I need to go out with the boys. Well, okay, you've got to let me do it at least. Like, where's your mind if that's what your idea of a good time is? Sorry, Ben, but mm -hmm. go on. I agree. I just think that that's yeah. very weird as for a married man. Right, right. Yeah, that's not becoming married life, but go ahead. Right. And that's the thing. I thought a lot of men would just pursue things that I'm not even sure they were really interested in. Like, just like smoking cigars, for example. Smoking cigars, it's, it sounds silly, but maybe some people, maybe it's a legitimate thing. But for most, most men, smoke it because it makes them feel like more like a man. And you know, it's like <laughs> ridiculous. You're not even inhaling it. It's just, it just, what's the point? Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, whole, the, whole, know. <laughs> the whole muscle car thing. I always thought that was really stupid. Um, and it was actually not really being a man. And to me, a, being a real man is being uh, intellectual and, and standing for something that's true and uh, fighting for it. You know, not being gutless and, and flaccid when it took when it came time to stand up for something that what was right or, or something that was you know just to stand up for something. Um, and I, I've always been that way. And in fact, I you know for me in particular, um, I'm I'm like five four, so I'm pretty short. And I've always been short, and but. You guys said before that uh, you know women would always like a man that had direction and um, uh, purpose, and I've always I, I've always like been surprised like I've always gotten like women that were out of way out of my league. But it's I think you're right. It's because I always had direction and I always stood for something, and I wasn't. Yes, and uh, you don't I, care what others think. That's right. a weak. It's weak when men are caring about others' approval all the time. It's right. everybody's approval. I don't mean like the people you love, but just randomly out in the day socially like you, you you care about people's approval all the time it makes you look weak right. and, let me and say something John, real quick sister victoria said something in the chat that's true men need hobbies and it's true uh i know that uh you know how they say yes. boys will be boys kind of thing well they're not boys we, we don't want hobbies. we don't want boys we all do we need something to do with our downtime so we we feel joel pans uh, for gold that's What's his, that? His hobby. He pans for gold. Okay. Well, yeah, let me give an example. Because my mother, my mother had to tell my sister-in-law this when, when they were younger in their marriage. She got upset because my brothers are both into cars. They are car nuts. They got it from right. my dad. They fix cars. They work on cars. They do models. The whole thing. And one day she she came in the house my brother was outside working on a car and she was a little upset and she's sitting there and she's like you know it's just like it takes up most of his time and my mother said well baby you know where he is he's right out there in your <laughs> he's right out there in your driveway yeah that's a healthy thing that's healthy <laughs> men men need I mean like you know joel likes to do like he like he has different hobbies but like they're panning for gold like fun like leather working type hobbies not like my hobby is to go drink with a bunch of dudes who aren't, a right. lot of them aren't married. Right. And then, right. you know, that, that's, that's a, a recipe for disaster. And it's weird. It's a weird thing to want to do when you have like your wife and children. I, I don't, I can't imagine wanting to do some of the stuff that women act like, like they normalize it on TV. Like, Oh, a girl's night out. Oh, that's normal. A girl's night out. And you go to a clubs and like dress, you know, skimpy and get makeup well, on. Without your husband, what I, like what? That, 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 that what I wanted like to something Satan came up with. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was. <laughs> yeah. But what I wanted to share about that was that I told my sister in law, I said, Hey, check this out. I said, just relax. I said, what you gotta do is figure out a way to get the time you want from him, that that personal time. I said, So why don't you do this? Try this. He's gotta eat, he's getting hot, he's getting sweaty out there. Why don't you make some lemonade or some iced tea, make yeah. some sandwiches, make a little table, go put it out there with your chairs. Y'all yeah. sit out there and you say, baby, come on over here and sit down. Let me talk to you. Get some lemonade. Let's talk. Let's chat for a little while. That's what you want. He's hungry. He's tired. He's thirsty. 
He's going to come sit down, talk to you for a little bit, take a break for a half hour, 45 minutes. Now you got that time you want it. He gets to go back and play. And she tried it and she loved, she, it, it, it just, it made it so much better for them. Yeah. That would okay, be, instead of fighting really it, fun. she went with the flow with it. So you got to get a little creative. But this was saying you're supposed to be working together, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's we don't we have four kids and no help, like no family that helps us with them, and so we don't get to like go like I can't. I, we haven't gone anywhere by ourselves except like maybe when I had the baby and his friend had the kids. While we were, you know, we don't have that, but we have an, a great relationship because we always like we want to be around each other right so and to him it's just for me like I don't it's still a lot so when I sit and watch something on tv with him that's like like a huge thing like he just love, that's a big deal for him that's like a date it might as well be a date because I because I'll sit still for a minute and actually watch something because he likes to still, still watch like you know different movies and stuff and I and really it's just that uh where you actually look at each other and remember each other where you're not people get so consumed with their daily life and everything it's very easy to forget that to forget to look at each other in the eyes and actually um talk like friends men love that like men i don't care what men just love to feel like they can talk to you and be comfortable and and that, that you're cool a lot of women it's like this weird thing where they think that they have to always be adversarial or something they have to mm -hmm. like like be adversarial with men and 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 not just um, I think I think some of that goes back to that trust issue too. Is he really doing yep. what he's saying? He's doing, you know, uh, I yep. I might not mind if he was going and playing. Uh, let's say working on a car with your friend, you know, yeah, in the next really neighborhood. Trust. But can I trust that that's where you are? So it, it goes exactly. back down to that trust. But we cut Ben off again because we talked too much. Yes, so let's let Ben continue with his thoughts because he was on a good rant. Yes. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, true. Uh, I want yeah. Yeah, I don't well, have a ton to say. I mean, it's it's hard to say. Be, be give examples because every relationship is different. You know, I don't want to. It's easy to say, oh, we have men. Uh, you play too many video games or whatever. But you know, that's not. It's not. That's. I play video games sometimes, and even then, it's not like uh, I, it consumes my life. Uh, and it's you know, it's maybe for like fifteen minutes or something. But but a lot of men, I they get totally involved in that, and they totally neglect. Um, I find it, you know, very offensive when I see, you know, like men, like especially married men with kids going out weekly with their drinking buddies. Um, and it's yeah. like, you know, and the things that they talk about, it's like not interesting at all. And so, I mean, I'm, I've always been kind of like my own man. Um, and there's very few people, I, I get, again, I'm more, more critical of men because I know what it's like to be a man. With women, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit more forgiving and um, because I know they are the weaker vessel in that respect and like emotionally and things like that. And uh, Bible tells me so. Don't you take it up with God? <laughs> um, the mm -hmm. but the uh, you know I think part of the reason uh, they uh, and part of the, I, I'm forgiving for that, but also I think some of the 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 aber aberrant behavior you see from women, like the whole feminism stuff, is because they have been um, cheated by men, essentially by men. True. Um, right. And they, right. They, they I, mean, I, I think it's them. true. Women have been mistreated by men. Uh, yeah. A lot. I don't know if it's about in our society, though. <laughs> you know, I think mm -hmm. in a Christian society, women had it pretty good. But uh, you know, that's what that's what's so ironic that they managed to make the women in the West so angry at men when women in the West have had it better than any woman anywhere across the world uh, in terms of safety and protection mm -hmm. and the way men ha treat women in the West, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to thanks to the influence of Christianity and that were the angriest. Yeah, I think that's true. It's ridiculous. That's what I was saying about how going to in my different experiences just being you know in interviews and in life situations men have been far more accommodating yes. and, and and kind than women sadly yeah but true and it's just like you said there is something weird going on where women are mean and hostile and and did so mistrustful and, and catty to one another two-faced two vying for attention and they have turned these women now, Celine was using this term, and, and we we were blocking it in the chat <laughs> because I don't I don't really want it in the chat replaying stuff, and I don't know what YouTube they playing so many games, and my stuff is not labeled for for um you know that restrictive age, so I didn't yeah. want the word H W H 
O R E being used in the chat. Oh, but I can't use it. Well, YouTube won't let me use it. I, this what I'm saying. Find that's me why as a I was so anytime trying to I be talk mean. about women in a comment, they delete my comments. Right. Even if I didn't say anything bad, YouTube has already caught on to me. They think I hate women. So yeah, I'm trying to, to talk. <laughs> there's certain words we can't use. They'll flag it and all this stuff. You guys don't understand. Nobody's trying to be mean to you. I know the yeah. word is in the Bible. That's not the issue. It's what YouTube's going to do. And yeah. I've been wanting to say that for the last hour and a half. But anyway, um, that's the point. And, you know, these women act like this because they're being conditioned by everything. The, the Back when they had magazines, I don't even know where that is. I meant to check and see. Do they even have magazines anymore in the supermarket? Well, you know how they used I'm to sure, do? Yeah, they do. The I don't know why. But, but yeah, uh, it, everything is twisted. It's not what it seems. They make things that are seem important that's not. And just it's, everything's flipped. That's why you got to have. How dare you tell women not mm -hmm. to kill their own babies? Oh, my how, goodness. Like, women are so entitled. And that's, that's the thing. They just have this. They don't even realize how entitled they are. They just they just think that. I mean, it's amazing. It's a bit, that's what a victim mentality does. And, and, and I see it, it no matter who, who, and that's why I don't want men starting. Cause listen, I know some guys are thinking men have victim mentality. No, I realize women have a victim mentality. They were given it by feminism and you know, right. they do feel jilted. A lot of women, especially mm -hmm. because this society has promoted men. They're already mad at, at men before they yes. even have a relationship. With yes, one. they're already angry. Yes, they feel like men are going to cheat on them. They feel like men want just only like we've been told a lot of lies about men, and then they've also been uh, told like men tell believe the lies. They think it's natural to be that way, and so women are angry right. all the time. But and they yeah. have victim mentality. But now I'm seeing men getting it. I'm seeing men across the Rubicon mm -hmm. from from just you know silently kind of sucking it up and thinking this is the way it's going to be. Women are just going to be impossible. And that's to pull them into homosexuality. Sudden. Yes, to but now the they're he, big, the he man happen. woman haters club. You know, they've decided that goes yes, all the way back to the little rascals, by the way. Yeah, yeah, the he man woman haters. <laughs> that's a really great yeah. way. That's a really good way to put it. It's so immature and um and ungodly. You know, even yes. if women are if women are treating you badly, like listen, I, you know, I know my my husband's best friend. I mean, what what his wife did. It's I can't I don't even get into it. It was a shock. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of women. I've heard a lot of stories like this recently. A lot of guys that my that Joel's friends with. I mean, he's, they just have women that just outright abusive and awful right. to them. Yes. And that's I know that that's happening. But yeah, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. sister, wait. Sorry, ben was ben, gonna say, say something. something. No, I was oh, I thought you just said. Well, I mean, if you keep it clean, I'd be interested yeah. in hearing like the gist of that. I mean, like oh, like what? Well, she generalizations. Yes. Well, here's the thing. They were married and they had two children. And he, um, let's just say that for some reason, now they are not believers. For some reason, Mike uh, and her got into this thing called swinging, right? And so they were doing that a little bit. And she had a best friend uh, named Tara. And Tara's husband was Biff or Bip or something. It's awful. Meathead guy. Well, they were, let's just say, swinging together. And um, Wendy ended up uh, stealing uh, her best friend. I already knew supposedly. what was coming. Yeah, I already knew what was coming. Bip. Yeah, she stole Bip and Wendy ran off together uh, and uh, and tried to just basically destroy the other, you know, the, the, their spouses. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and now Tara and Mike are really, really cool, awesome people. And here's the thing God did. I do believe God did this, even though they're lost. Um, God brought Mike and uh, tear it together in the aftermath of this which is really for the children i think because they broke up wendy and bip broke up the family uh, and and they both uh, tara and bip had four children or five children and and mike and wendy had two but instead of mike going off with somebody else and you know what like basically god brought the family back together by bringing wendy and uh i mean being uh tara and mike the people that were jilted the people that were left by their spouses um, together, so the family. You see, what I'm saying it's like it, 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 it was less brokenness because Wendy and Bip were now going to have this family that Mike's kids were going to have to see. But now it's just instead of adding even more people into the equation, God just mended. I really believe mended the situation by bringing um, uh, uh, Mike and uh, Tara together. But the thing is, is the courts are. You know, on the one hand, Wendy has done all types of atrocious things. She's like definitely on drugs. They have had a very unstable life. And now she's decided to poison the kids 
against Mike. All of a sudden, she won't let him see them, even though he has half the custody. And she's basically kidnapped them for the past few months, and he's about to go to court. However, uh, uh, Biff also did the same thing with their do- the daughter he shared with uh, Tara. He kidnapped her. He wouldn't let her see him. She had like all like custody. He just had the weekends. And um, and guess what? The courts didn't just swoop in and help the woman in that situation. She had to really fight and he should have been in jail for what happened. So um, but men think and, and listen, my dad got custody of me in the 80s. He had mm-hmm. to pay 40 grand to do it. I don't rem- I don't know if he bribed the judge. I just know he said I cost him 40 grand. <laughs> but um, I, I, he, I, I thank God <laughs> he did. Now, did, I did, he, did he happen to tell you that, like when you'd be acting up? Hey, you cost me yeah. forty grand. Cut it out. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I know that he would say it when uh, you know my mom was acting up. I mean, love my mom, but he could not let her have custody of me. And he said he would call me Judy when I was being really unreasonable and bad and stuff. Like he would say, "Okay, Judy." That was the worst thing you could say. I loved my mom, but I knew don't you tell that was her name. I would be like oh no that's embarrassing never that but um but I would get you know like her sometimes and she was just my mom was her own worst enemy but um the thing is is that you know and that was another example my mom was really bad to my father but my father was a man and he was the bigger man about everything always and he didn't let her bait him into abusing her like it's what she wanted she really wanted that's what she wanted men to do to her because her father abused her so she would she didn't understand a relationship romantic relationship with a man where it wasn't abusive somehow and so she would try to make it that way a lot of times Mm -hmm. when women it's like that they've been abused you know i think Mm -hmm. it's like two out of three girls are sexually abused i wasn't Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i think i'm the only one i know um i mean i don't know that many that that like even boys or girls who weren't i wasn't but a lot of times if you see that kind of behavior and just well, you, you know, my dad understood my mom's brokenness and he was, you know, patient with it because he knew where it came from because he knew about her father. She didn't tell him, but her mother did, uh, told him what, mm-hmm. what her father did to her. And um, imagine that being abused by your own father, sexually abused by your own father. And um, mm-hmm. uh, that's very common today. And that's another way they're breaking men and women. They're breaking them because I truly believe that a lot of times with this molestation stuff, not always, I don't think that it's, that it's always possible. I think that there's different spiritual rules, but I do believe a lot of times that this molestation stuff is happening to spread like this demonic infection. I think that, that there's some like truth to that, which is, you know, we, they say that abuser, the abused become abusers, not always, obviously, but um, I think that, that Satan tries to get kids early and screw them up so that they can't have oh, a healthy yeah relationship um because joel and i are both children of divorce joel joel's father is a mayor somewhere that beat his mother up while they were while she was pregnant and and ran off while she left she left i mean she wouldn't have been with him after that she when he was pregnant she was pregnant with joel and uh he's like a mayor somewhere but he's an alcoholic and he just like Mm -hmm. he just lied to joel and joel found him finally one day and he's oh no i'm not your dad i just let her say that so that you'd have a good name but she's not a liar. Like he's clearly look like it's, he's just a liar. But Joel is, and I have an incredible marriage, even though we never saw one. So mm-hmm. you don't have to, see, you know, I mean that, but that's God. I believe that's God that did that for us, but it is really important. Typically you wouldn't think Joel was a, the ch- child of a single mother because he doesn't have that. A lot of times, especially men who are raised by a single mother don't turn out so well. Um, but somehow, because, because, you know, he had the right role models, um, in his life, like his uncle and his grandfather specifically, he's like, you know, they don't make him like, they don't make men like Joel anymore. They really don't. And, but you don't have to become what your parents were because, uh, if, if that were the case, he and I would not have even made it this far. Um, and we have the least dramatic, happiest <laughs> relationship of anybody that we know. Uh, I didn't know it was possible to have a relationship like this. So, um, and, and most, and that's one of the other ways that they poison people because people, re- I, I would have told you that it wasn't possible to like, to really be madly in love with someone you were married to after like, mm-hmm. I don't know, five years. I would think like, like, I didn't know, I thought you would just, you'd have to lose interest and then, you know, it would be. And the, they couldn't last. Like it, people would fight all the time. I thought this was just what marriage and relationships were. It was just misery after a certain mm-hmm. point. Like I didn't th- I, I didn't think it could be happy. Um, mm-hmm. Or even like, like to where you love the person more all the time. 
I didn't think, it, and they tell us it's not possible. Yeah, and I just they want, do. that's a lie from the devil. Well, especially if you watch programs like your favorite, Married with Children. Oh, that's right. We're talking about that. <laughs> Let's, that did it. let's mention that before we close out for this evening because we're at the uh, getting at the end of the broadcast here. But I wanted to comment on that because that we we said that when we were having our conversation last week that that was one of the most Wicked. demonic, evil, <laughs> destructive programs on television yes. concerning marriage and the family. Yes, it's so evil. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, let's hear Ben's thoughts. Do you do you ever watch that, Ben? Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. I had way too much taste, even as an unsaved person, <laughs> to uh, Good. look you at did. that. Yeah, Good I, I, for, what a great answer! <laughs> it was. It was just yeah. trash. It was trash. It was it, not funny. It was just like it's, it's just so. Oh, it was like yeah, it's disgusting. And there's a lot of programs like that. Um, but oh yeah, yeah that, that was the worst of them. I, I watched like one or two episodes. And even the the things that they tried to lure me in with, like, you know, like uh, what Christina Applegate, you know, oh, she's so hot, you know, uh, you should watch, you know, watch it for that. It, it, it had no effect. Um, yeah, utter trash. Even back then, it's I knew it was trash. too depressing, to, even for Christina Applegate. Yes. To it. Like, it was too, she was depressing even. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and I watched it, I was little, I was, I was really little, uh, but um, I, I don't know why, I think it was the green slime that's what worked on me because it was a bright green color. Like it, I don't know. I, it meant, reminded me of Tales from the Crypt, and I used to watch that. So I think I always got drawn into it, like as a little kid, like thinking something about that intro was what did it. And then I, even though I hated it, I hated that show. I really, it really depressed me. But somehow, because it was, I don't know, I thought that it wasn't supposed to depress me or something. Like I didn't, I didn't mm-hmm. know it was an option to look at when I was little. I didn't know it was an option to look at something in real life. No, it's intentionally miserable to watch this. They do it on purpose. I thought, <laughs> right. no, just keep watching and power yeah. through it. And for like in between the misery, there'll be some funny moments, but it poisoned my mind against marriage, I'm sure. And it, it I didn't, it didn't reflect reality. I mean, it was like, Mm-mm. at least my reality, it was, but it, but it made me think, so is this like white trash? Well, like, remember how we <laughs> talked about how they slid in homosexual, uh, yes. Signals and, you know, making him that he detested having sex with his wife. Yes. That's about, yep. Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, man, that was well. They hated each other, and yeah, yeah and sex. He would like try to. She wanted it, and he would like try to get away. But he was always looking at Playboy and stuff, and he always was looking at other women. But he was like mm-hmm. terrified of having sex. With, like it was disgusting to him, mm-hmm. right? And and, she and would, having like, these bromances with other yes. men to fill what should have been attention for his wife. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I forgot about that. I'm trying to remember yeah, who, I did. who it was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything about and then the kids, the way disrespectful, um, they were just manipulative, disrespectful, uh uh just awful. Dad's like always the children. idiot. Yeah, dad's always oh, the he, idiot. Yes. Mom's smart, conniving, you know. Yes. There's all of us just <laughs> just told they just wanted to take a wrecking ball to the family. That was it. You yeah. know, that that program. But Anyway, I did, we we had went on a long, a long dissertation man. about it last week, Goes talking about how like destructive it was. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think now. There's something about that song. Uh, this I tell you, brother, you can't have one without the other. Okay, so the the song wasn't bad, but the imagery that they would play in the intro was bad. Mm-hmm. Like it was like making you think that you were dissociative to this fate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Doomed, this is your fate. You're doomed <laughs> to this fate. You know and. <laughs> That's and that's why so many people I know I when I was a kid I thought until I was like in my I don't know my mid twenties I was like I'm never gonna get married that's married. stupid why do people get married I don't want to have kids that get married uh, why would anybody do that sounds like a terrible idea <laughs> I would say that. They, why would it you know they reinforce like the, the hatred of men with programs like um three and was it no two and a half men. You know, yeah, I never watched that. The, I never hated men, though. Luckily. Playboys, you know. Yes. <laughs> this is what I really want. Right. And that's what used to make me very bitter and, and to where even though I had never really been cheated on and also um, uh, I didn't hate men. I always hated feminism, actually. Even though looking back, I realized I was infected with it anyway. I just didn't realize that I was because I, I thought I hated feminism. I didn't realize how, like, where all the ways feminism had affected my perception of reality to where 
I was accidentally a feminist still anyway. Um, but, um, but I never hated men. I always rejected that. However, uh, the fact that um, the world told me that no matter what, you're just going to have to accept that men, they want to sleep with everybody and they're just, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're going to mentally cheat on you forever and that's normal. And they're really just kind of doing you a favor by not sleeping with everybody, but they want to be, they want to be. And that that's was like, wait a minute, yeah. that will hurt me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, well, okay. So even if I don't think they're going to do it, like I, I, if I'm in love with somebody, I don't, I don't want other people. If I love somebody, I like, like while I'm in love with somebody and this is as a lost person while I was dating, I was capable of actually only having eyes for that person. Uh, and yeah. to me, I thought like, well, so I'm, I'm just always going to be in this position where no matter what the relationship's going to be unfair and unequal because I'm going to be like mentally like loyal in a way that they can't be mm-hmm. uh, because they've told men not to expect better of themselves, but it's just natural to be a whoremonger basically. Yeah, that's and a that that's who they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot. It made me bitter. And it made me I cheated preemptively, when I felt that that like, if I if I if I felt betrayed, in that way, mentally, I would because mm-hmm. I felt like, well, it's never going to be fair. You're all that and it was just poison uh, that from society that made me think preemptively be jilted. Uh, because I if I if I su- suddenly started to feel like somebody wasn't mentally loyal to me, I would just go ahead and not be physically loyal to them. And it was like, what? that's really cutting off your nose to spite your face, isn't it? Mm, but I was that yeah. was where I was angry with men. I was angry with men in that way. And it's not true. <laughs> but I was shadow boxing with it. Uh, but it, but, you know, men will tell you this. They'll tell you that you're silly if you believe that there's a man that doesn't think this way or act this way. That, that you're just naive and he's lying to you. I had so many guy friends act like, 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 oh yeah, okay. Yeah, he's different. I'm sure. And that demoralizes women when you say things yeah. like that and tell them to expect, you know, the worst. When they feed and, into the stereotypes that they've yes. created, that yes. all men are this way and no man can be faithful and all that stuff. And they're all just these brute beasts that are only interested in sex and feeding their own desires and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, why would a know, woman want to be faithful to that? Even if you, you haven't cheated yet, why would she want to be faithful to somebody that, that, you know, is that wishes he could cheat, but won't because you might get mad. Right. That's really not worth being. That's what God, Christ right. said. That's adultery. It's adultery yeah. to cheat yes. mentally. So we'll continue with this conversation about this aspect of it, about how they've been feeding us in society to hate each other, because there's, yes. there's another side to the spectrum. Well, we'll continue. We'll talk about women and then and talk about the, the flip side and the other aspects of how they've been feeding us to keep us apart. And you know, now we got COVID to keep us apart. And so you don't make any babies. But I remember one scene in, in a movie I never forgot that I loved. It was a movie that was actually, I watched, eh, I'll still watch psychological thriller kind of things. Um, uh, but I don't, I, don't, I don't watch horror movies anymore. Uh, but when it was called The Hand That Cro- Rocks the Cradle, you remember that one, Sister Angel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it yeah. Rebecca D. Mornay? Was that her name? Yes. Okay. Yes. And there's this scene where she's trying to seduce the man of the house. You've seen this in numerous movies. They replay Demonic. this stuff over and over again. Huh? What was that? Demonic. Just yeah, the, was the she? spirit behind that yeah. borderline well, personality well, disorder. Right. But yeah. that's not even what I'm tra- I'm getting at. I want to get yeah. to this, this part, which was... She's trying to seduce him and he is tempted. You see this in the scene, but he looks at her and I was in the theater. I used to love just going to the theater. I guess that's going to be a thing of the past too, people. But uh, there was a, the theater was packed for this movie. Then the night that I went to saw it, see it. And he, he is tempted. He's wet. If I remember some kind of way they were wet, I don't remember, but uh, it, with water and he's, looking at her and he's tempted and he said, but he says to her, he says, there's only one woman for me. (laughs) And that was his wife. And literally, I'm not kidding. The audience erupted and it was all the females, a lot of men, it's the men clap too, but all the women in there just, it was like, Oh, thank God. Somebody just finally just said that it's like women was just like dying to hear it at that moment when he just said there's only one yep. woman for me and he let her know you ain't getting it so yeah you know and we, well, there are men, men like are that. told not to value their chastity or their bodies 
that, that or, like, oh, there's no value or in they're you monogamy. being chased. Yeah. It, that's what I mean. Yeah. And that's not true at all. Like, I don't know. About it is. But like, it's not like, oh, it's a, I expect a guy to be a big whore. When I get no, older, they, I it, there it. are that's men. Not a, that's not attractive. That's not an accomplishment not. to nope. get to get somebody who would sleep with anything. I'm like a guy like that. I'd like I'd rather feel like I exactly. I've accomplished. Like oh, I got I was like guys that were hard to get. It's not, not like big ho. It's boring and like anything. it's not a it's compliment not. if a guy will sleep with you. That's not no. flattering at all. You know. So um uh, yeah, I I agree. Like women, <laughs> at least most women, I think, are attracted to men that or you know or they probably would yeah, be if more men were this way. Yes, that, that, yeah, they don't just give it up all like that. Like you don't value yourself. Like only women are supposed to. Like you, you can you can rack up the mileage. <laughs> That's not what the there, Bible buddy. teaches. Yeah, it is. not it's what disgusting. the Bible teaches. So yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> the husband's supposed to be. He's supposed to be the man's supposed to have one wife according to the new covenant. Because remember, in the old covenant, they did practice poly polygamy. And I tell you, Jesus showed them what the example was supposed to be which was the beginning. And so if the Lord had intended polygamy, he would have brought Adam multiple wives, but he did not. So he points back to the beginning when, when they said Moses, uh, he said to them, Moses gave you a writ of divorcement because of the hardness of your heart. He said, but from the beginning, it was not so. So when we go back and look at the beginning, we don't see polygamy. We see one well, man is a and picture one woman. of many ways to Jesus. That's what I think it is. It's like a picture <laughs> of, 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 of Christ having multiple brides. He doesn't has one bride. It's those who believe in him. But polygamy to me is kind of like symbolic of like, if, if anybody could be saved, uh, no matter what their religion was like in terms of like what they believed, I, I, that's Very the way I can put it. Like, like getting what they want their own way. Yeah. Like a Buddhist and a Hindu and all that stuff. They're like what, you know, universalism essentially. Well, Ben, kind of what polygamy. we've reached that point in the broadcast that I'm going to let you close us out <laughs> because it's time for us to say good night and good morning to everyone that's uh, on the East Coast. Uh, I wanted to adjourn early so that uh, Sister Angel and Brother Ben can get their rest because they got to get up early and do their business tomorrow. So let's go ahead and, and end right here. Sounds good. That sounds good. Um, ben? Did you fall asleep, Ben? No, no I'm here. He was yeah. just there. He said he said uh, very astute last night. Like, do you think yeah, that's I, yes. No, I really do. I, I, I love – it's hard for me to even – because you guys say everything I want to say, but so much better than I could. And I just love listening to you guys go on forever. Um, and so I'm part of the audience, I feel like, a lot of times. And don't have a ton more insight to add, especially for these these type of matters. But, um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be definitely interested in uh, continuing the conversation um, later down the road. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's important to hear from somebody like you because you are the, like, you're not a conformist, right? So I can tell you've always had your own idea about, like, like, you feel, you're like me, only a man, because I was the same way about women. Like, I, I didn't, I just didn't, I was almost, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. Women embarrassed me, embarrassed me to actually be a woman because of how I saw women, act, girls acting. And I didn't want to be a guy. But I used to wish that I just didn't have a gender when I was a little kid because I was so humiliated by girls. And it was, to me, embarrassed they me embarrassed to be a girl. You, you don't yes, want to be a girl. Was, if, if, some, if they had these crazy teachers in there at the time where they're encouraging <laughs> transgenderism, they would, I would have been screwed up. I would have, I would have gone ahead. And, I mean, I really probably, they probably got a hold of me and done it. Um, because I had like gender dysphoria kind of like I was just embarrassed by girls they just were it was just humiliating to me but Ben was kind of the same way I'm not saying he didn't want to be a guy but he you know you 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 make right. a lot of observations that women need to hear that a lot of times men don't always think the way that they tell like the media tries to tell us men think right um, I love up. I love that sister angel is so comfortable saying exactly what she <laughs> thinks this is like yeah. I didn't want to be. I didn't. If if I had been, I wouldn't want to be a girl because they they embarrassed me. <laughs> true. I was just like a lot of women would never dare because they're like I don't want to be thought of as this that or the other thing, and they would never say That's that the they were not comfortable in their own skin and yeah. how people made people made you feel. You know, I yeah. I did when I was growing up as a little girl. I would look at other little girls and shake my. <laughs> <laughs> I would shake my head like, is that all we are? You know, yes, and like, so it's got to be more to us than this. 
Yes. Oh, I know. And they are also the conformity <laughs> police. That's the worst part about them is that like they will enforce, like that's why they're enforcing the masks and the COVID thing. It's these women running around uh, enforcing conformity on us and they do it worse really than men do. But it's sad seeing men go along with it now. But, yeah. but women, that's what that was one of the most humiliating things was that it wasn't so much that women weren't like they were like smart enough. It wasn't like, oh, they're all idiots. But the way that their brains worked in terms of like not they didn't want to think for themselves. And so it, mm-hmm. like I always felt like guys got to d- approach the world as like a person first. Right. Kind of like their gender was like, it, it was like a default state. They were, and they are, they're actually, they're the default, you know, in a way, like, because we mm-hmm. were created from Adam's rib, right? So now I know why I felt that way. But it bothered me because I didn't want to approach the world as though I was a, like a female. That's how like most girls, that it's like, that's the lens that colors everything. I don't want mm-hmm. a lens. I just like was, you know, and that and embarrassed me because like, I, I just wanted to be an individual and I didn't want people to associate things automatically with my personality just based on my gender and um, not that I was trying to be a weirdo, but just a lot of stuff that girls were into and their tendencies did not reflect me. And it was embarrassing because I wouldn't have I would never be caught dead doing some of that stuff. But um, but, you know, uh, uh, that's that's a beauty. I think God creates. I, I mean, I, I've come to realize that, it, you know, I, I first when I got saved, I thought, oh, no. Is there a bunch of stuff about my personality that's like offensive to God because I'm a female and it's kind of weirdly male in, in the, some of my uh way I think or the things I like doing it was just when I was really just figuring all this stuff out and God showed me that you know no of course not like he makes he makes everybody different it's it's when you know the word of God is true Mm -hmm. um and you understand the general it's like a category you understand the categories are accurate categorically this is how women are are made to be but you you know you'll know whether something that you know a tendency of yours is is of God or not by how what it results in right and my tendencies that are not very female or like atypical of females, uh, they've resulted in, in good things, not bad things. Um, and things that help me um, in a lot of ways in terms of like, even the way that I try to explain the gospel and things like that. Like a lot of um, mm-hmm. men have a, a easy time understand like the way I relate. Like, like a lot of times guys won't listen mm-hmm. to a female live streamer, you know, because of the way that she is just like women, there's a certain way they approach things. And then um, other times, you know, with like you, Renee, or, or me, or certain women will, guys are even more comfortable yeah. with because, you know, because it's not like mm-hmm. this weird, um, there's not these well, they also, on the they personality. Well, they we're not hostile toward them too. Yes. You know, 54% of my audience is, according to YouTube's analytics, are male, which yeah, I, I found surprising. <laughs> I was right. like, what? That's cool. That's, that is really it was cool. cool. I know. thought it was nice. Shout out to all the fellas out there. Well, what you said, but, you said that it was funny that I said what I was thinking and I wasn't wor- like mm-hmm. how I said about how I was, that I think is one of the big things. Maybe people don't notice, but that's what that's one, right. one thing women do. Right. And that's why men, a lot of men don't want to listen to women. They don't realize that's why, but it's because women won't just say don't say like what they're really thinking. Exactly. Exactly. Whereas men are a lot more comfortable doing that. And they're, you know, they want to know what you're really thinking. They don't want to have to guess. Yeah, exactly. Did you say that thing, Ben? <laughs> I thought I heard him break in there. Uh, no, no, he's no. He, he, he's one just, thing I'll say um, tonight. One thing I should say. One, uh, I'm being kind of a little bit quiet tonight because I'm trying a new audio setup, so I don't have to wear oh, okay. headphones. And um, mm-hmm. and but I overlooked something, so I think when I'm talking, there might be a slight echo. So I've been kind of quiet for that reason. But I'll. Oh. I'll uh, Oh, honey, no, you oh, sound okay. You're the only one who cares about that. I, I love, I, yeah, I heard, I, I, I love audio files. You guys are very like, oh, but there's an echo. Like, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. so I'll, that, as long as I can hear what the person's saying, I'm good. Like, I, uh, but I'm, I do appreciate people that, you know, yes, I am definitely, uh, mm-hmm. I definitely, um, a detail oriented guy and I like, uh, high quality stuff. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an audio, audio file. file. Yeah. <laughs> and and a stuffed shirt bin, or that wasn't you. No. Stiff. What's that? No. What's that? I, oh, stuffed shirt. And a stuffed shirt, or that yeah, wasn't yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, stuffed shirt. I'm, a, I'm just a mannequin. No, no, no he's a stuffed shirt when it comes to audio. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes when it comes, I uh, just when it comes to certain technical things, right. but it, in other ways, Ben's very, uh, very. Uh, I could tell he would take a lot of risks. He's not afraid to take risks. Um, but uh, you know, but, yeah. That's what we, I think why we all clicked because we all would have been the oddballs in school and we didn't care. 
<laughs> that yes, the that's the truth. I was, yeah, actually, that's a bit of advice. I was popular, but not because I wanted to be. I didn't, I really didn't care what anybody thought. And so it's not like I was with all the, the cool people all the time going to parties. I wouldn't be caught dead. But because they knew I didn't care what anybody felt. Like when people can tell you don't care what they think of right. you. And it's for real. It's not like I'm going to pretend because I'm insecure. I legit, I was, I felt like a 30 year old who woke up in a school and like a 30 year old who suddenly <laughs> trapped. Like you wouldn't care what the other kids thought of you as a grown up walking in there. You'd be like, well, this sucks. That's how I felt. And so uh, people <laughs> like that because people really don't like when they can sense weakness and insecurity and like that you're being, you're trying to get approval. That's what people mm-hmm. don't like. And a lot of the popular kids, they put it in movies, right? That, oh, they're the meanies, they're the mean people, the bullies, not where I went to school. And when I went to school, the kids that were the most popular, I ended up befriending, like a lot of them were my friends, uh, but they were they were well-adjusted. That's what made them pop. They were well-adjusted and, um, and, and they weren't bullies. Actually, I was more of a bully. But I was, I, uh, in my school, at least, huh? I, I was voted... Um... I was voted the most mysterious uh, student. <laughs> oh, cool. That's the best. We didn't have that category. That's neat. So you were most popular mysterious. too in your way. Yes. Because you didn't I was, care what people think. Right. I was popular because I, mm. uh, I was different, but not different and weird, but just different. Like mm-hmm. you couldn't, people couldn't make sense of me. They couldn't pin me down. That, right. Yeah. That's how it was. Uh, yeah. And that, that was what I told my little cousin. Uh, right away, I said, you've got to stop caring what people think. And that like that's when they'll stop bullying you. That's when they'll stop, that's right. I know, you know, True. and it works and, and it's a good lesson in life in general, because, um, uh, the sooner you can realize that like, it's a turn off to people if they can sense that you care about their approval, because then mm-hmm. they think you care more about their approval than what's right or what you really think. And then um, they also know you're easily manipulated. Yep. It's yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's uh, a turn off in all sorts of ways, but I know yep. that like, I, I mean, just from me and, you know, it was stupid. It was like from a movie or something, but like the guy that was voted, was it most popular and prom king, whose girlfriend was voted best looking. He like, it was like a weird cheese, all that thing. Like we became like really good friends. His name was Jack and we were just friends. And I'd grown up with his girlfriend since preschool, although her mom was in the cult. Now in hindsight, uh, she was one of the witches that ran my preschool. But anyway, he got like this <laughs> thing where he fell in love with me because he could be himself, just like kind of the one of these cheesy movies, right? Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. like feel that way about him because I didn't like him like that. I just thought he was just really cool. He was a really funny guy. But um, his girlfriend was the prom queen and voted best looking. And yet, because uh, I didn't care what anybody thought about me, that was attractive, right? So mm-hmm. that's that's an attractive quality. Now, I didn't personally like him that way, but I mean, I'm sure he, he was a great catch. Jack is a really you know good looking guy, really awesome guy. But um that you know it really is true that uh, that that is overall in life like you know that's why I was attracted to Joel I mean he was the first guy I ever met that like really didn't care what people thought like and that like and it wasn't like in a way where he was trying to come off like a jerk right he just was neutral like he just didn't care he and so he own person yes yes like to the extreme like to where it, I mean it, I had never seen anybody like that in except in movies I'd only seen men like that mm-hmm. in movies and they would like the, 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 the character that um I don't know like Christian Slater played a lot or something where they were mm. uh it wasn't an act that they were right. you know but a lot of guys were trying to assume, you know and so but that that was uh, the angel uh, said that one's gonna be mine right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he was the first guy ever really rejected me too it was so funny oh. uh, like re- like yeah i it was it, you know he, but that was that was a test right that was a true test like mm-hmm. like with, you know and he uh it, it was for some weird reason that he fell inside to fall in love yeah he fell in love with me and i was like pushing 30 with a child like at a and a who at like a and nothing but bill and a, and a, a fiance to abandon me that's when Joel decided I was really attractive. Not the uh, not when I was like a, a care, carefree like little teeny bopper. In yeah, you were dangerous. Then. <laughs> no, I yeah, I didn't respect me then. That's let me did. let me stop. We're gonna stop right here. We're gonna stop right mm-hmm. here. I have one other thing I need to say because somebody asked me. Uh, they said, "Sister, you didn't call out our late night owl status." <laughs> I said, "Well, I stopped doing that after I discovered that." Uh, we, we talked about androgens. I don't know if you guys remember that. And we talked about how people ascribe human characteristics or vice versa to animals and then animals to humans. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Anthropomorphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah. I used the wrong term, not androgen. Anthropomorphic. It's getting late for me. I didn't get enough sleep. Yeah, yeah, androgen. <laughs> so, it's, uh, the other anthro yeah. yeah, the the blending of uh, yes, androgen is the blend. Tilda Swinton. Oh, yeah. Tilda, Tilda yes. Swinton. <laughs> what did you just say? Tilda Swinton, the actress. <laughs> That's what I think of when I think right. of an androgen. androgen. Is, when they're yes. androgynous, when you can't yes. tell male or female, the blending. But the um, anthropomorphic is when you describe those. See how she just remembered that? This girl's an encyclopedia. Uh, and so I don't do it anymore. That's why. So I wanted to let you know. Because I didn't want anybody going, oh, see, she's using all these occultic terms. And, you know, people be tripping. So I was like, I'm just going to move away from that. And I don't do it anymore. I just say... You know, it's time for us to go and uh, thank all of you <laughs> for joining us. I appreciate everyone that joined us tonight. Some of you guys came in really late. I saw uh, Michael came in late, and uh, that's okay. I'm not criticizing you. You're going to have to go back and listen because you missed a really great stream. We did. We talked about a lot of different things, and Sister Renee was on here earlier. She was early. She was on here before you came in, I think, uh, yes. and then David – uh, I don't know. I don't know if you came in late. I don't think you did. You were here at the beginning. So thank you for uh, mentioning that. I had been mentioned. I've been wanting to mention why I stopped saying that, and you reminded me. So uh, much appreciation for that. So does anyone have anything else to say before we end the stream that you'd like to say? Mm -hmm. Oh, you got quiet. So I guess no. The answer is no. Oh, I, so can then, you hear me? Yeah, I was saying I think I'm good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brother Ben, you good back there? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. I was trying to speak. I, I thought there was something, but I can't remember now. I really do hope that all of you out there have a, a restful, see, I can't talk, mm -hmm. a wonderful rest of the morning and uh, a great Sunday and rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Bless all of you in the mighty name of King Jesus. Good night and good morning. Good night.